It's Ace Attorney time. Hi. Welcome. Welcome back, all you bots that watch this stream and attribute to nothing in my life. I hate you guys. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back with more Ace Attorney. As if we would ever stop. I'm a little tired. <laughs> I am a little tired. Came home from work today and instantly started fucking, uh, just went to sleep and, and wasted a whole day. I feel like shit. But we're gonna play some Ace Attorney and maybe that will remedy that. Alright? I'm a little happy, you know? Nintendo had their direct, announced a bunch of good things. Kalinoa's coming back, that's cool. Right? And also, uh, we got a trailer for Wolf Among Us 2 and... Atomic Hearts, that looks great, that looks amazing. I like it, I like it a lot. But hey, <coughs> that's not what the stream is about. We're here to continue the Great Ace Attorney. Where we last left off, we beat the third case, right? Which was our first actual, like, real trial. First time we actually had to sit in a fucking, like, courthouse without having someone hold our hands the whole entire time. Even though, you know, it's Ace Attorney and someone's always holding your hand. They'll never stop holding your hand. They love holding your hand. Um, and that ended with, uh, neither, neither confirmation or, uh, deconfirmation of, um, whether our client, Mr. McGill, did was guilty or not. From the start, I looked at him, I said, you're guilty. So who knows, he might be guilty, but... You know, who also knows, at the end of the uh, trial, we were greeted by a wonderful cutscene in which uh, someone was inside of the, uh, what the fuck did they call it, the omnibus. Someone was inside of that, and it was burning away. So, maybe that was McGilded in there, maybe he's dead now, someone killed him, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that was him in there, but we won't really find out anything until, uh, until we start here. And continue with the fourth trial, the adventures of the clouded Kokoro. Co Kokoro? Kokoro. Yes. Kokoro. Kokoko. Chocobo. I begin to think, Wilson, said Sholmes, turning his head languidly in my direction. That there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Oh, that's it? That's the cutscene? Damn it, I was hoping for a little more. You know, kinda... Kinda stall for time. Right, so I don't have to read anything. <laughs> I am not ready. I'm not ready to sit here and read a book to you guys tonight. Let me take a drink of my water, right? But not too much, because then I'll have to go to the bathroom. Alright, let's get started. There's a reason I started this fucking stream early anyways. February 19th. 9.47 a.m. British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Natahoda? I, I did sleep last night. It's kind of a weird question to ask. <laughs> did you sleep at all? Not did you sleep well. Did you sleep at all? No, not at all. Okay, well, damn. That was not expecting that. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious, I felt like we were staying in a palace. 
And with all the gas lights twi twinkling, fuck, I'm already having like hiccups. It was brighter than day even in the middle of the night. That's about, fuck. I already fucked up, damn it. What about the enormous beds? After my time on the SS Bureau, I wasn't gonna waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh yes. It really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except... When I learned that we owed three pounds for the room, the dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Three pounds? It's not that much, is it? Oops, I'm sorry about that. The building was so impressive, and the entrance so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, the sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. Three pounds? Well, I mean, it is... Uh, it is like fucking way, way back in the day, so money is way more. You know. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. I'm really sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire spent... What? Stip... Stipin? Stip... Stipin? Stipin. What? What is that word? It's already begun. All our money will be used up in ten days or less. See? Was that so hard? You could've just said money. You could've just said that. Currencies. Ugh. London is a scary place. Ah, uh, good morning to you at this early hour. Lord Chief Justice. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well. Mm -hmm. Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. Is his, again, I'm not sure. Is his name Justice? Or is his name Chief? And his last name's Justice? Or is the whole thing a title? It's hard. I, I don't know. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Zidato's son is amazing. She didn't, she didn't even bat an eyelid, even in the presence of an imposing Lord Strongheart. Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive intuition. Intu- wait, what? Intuition? What the fuck? Into- uh, it- <laughs> Words. I don't even fucking know. My, my brain is at a blank here. <laughs> Jesus. Already started. I am a very dumb, dumb boy. Oh, uh, God. In, Intitation? That's how you say that? It's fucking... Uh, into British courtroom practices. Oh, yes. It was very eye-opening. Thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Narahoto performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been appraised of the events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh. No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a full-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Hmm. Thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Where's my badge? Now, in view of your new appointment, I have fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case? Already? Nothing trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure. I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. I haven't, I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? Strongheart, you're real, like, fucking shady, man. Like, I just want, I just, like, I'm hoping you're just a guy with a very strong personality, right? But you're fucking shady as shit. You, are you on someone's payroll? Alright, I'm, I got my eyes on you. The capability, cap, damn it, the 
culpability, culp, 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 culpability, fucking words, man, of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to prefer, uh, per, damn it, prefer judgment. Well, Lord Von Zykes, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. Is he dead? I think he's dead. I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilda really was innocent. Mr. Narahoda, it's just that I never imagined to ascertain the truth. I never imagined what the fuck. All right, I'm just going to shoot myself off camera now. I just never managed to ascertain the truth. Imagine. God, can you tell how sleep deprived I am? And then the trial ended. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magus McGildit passed away, immediately following the trial. No! What? Mr. McGildit is... dead? But people die when they are killed. I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next arrangement. Time enough to talk. Uh... I will now present to you... My armband identifies as wearers of defense lawyers throughout the empire. Fucking here you go. Check it out. Lord Strongheart, may I show you this? To accept this item. Assume. Assu <clears throat> Alright, I'm just. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the night. It's just. Oh, God. What the hell is wrong with me? Issue a receipt. Examine it thoroughly. And make a formal statement of my findings. Would require something in the religion. What? Religion. Something in the region of 24 seconds of my time. Sorry? Does the item warrant 24 seconds of my time, Mr. Narahodo? Let's leave it for now. Damn it, he wasn't impressed by it. Alright. <clears throat> So what happened? Why why he dead? I don't understand. What happened? How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the old bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course. That was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGilda had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already. The police have identified a corpse found inside the inside the charred shell of uh, inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Miss Gilded. It's awful. The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. And how could that have happened? Oh, shit. That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now. Immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilda did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. Well, I must be making tracks now. Tis time for the inspection. Sorry, what inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I ask if I could be present for it myself. Myself. I get that he's supposed to have like a fucking, you know, uh, a wee little Irish voice, you know, stuff like that, but I'm not reading it like that. My mind's already melted. An inspection of the omnibus. Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But, then who was Miss Gilded talking about? 
Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is not is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. That's what he gets for trying to make a fucking fool out of me. <clears throat> we all got played in that court that day. Alright, British court. I gotta clear my throat. <coughs> so, how did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Oh, well, uh... I don't know. I mean, it was... Wow. Mr. Narhoto means that the whole experience was steeped in the... So... Fuck. That, I'm, I'm not even gonna try. Solmilid... Uh, sol, solmilid... Solmilid... Not, that's not even how you pronounce that. Salm... Salmity... Fuck, whatever. Of great... Of Great Britain's long history. That is... That is a choice word. Go fuck yourself. I wanna shoot the guy who wrote the script for this. <laughs> Making... Fucking using big words don't make you smart, okay? Do what Albert Einstein said. Make it simple. He's like, make that shit simple. It don't need to be any harder than it has to be. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, Susato-san has such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. Get out, get out of my mind! You and your fucking Jedi mind tricks. The judicial system here is just the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate that your very first trial was a simple affair. S si simple? Simple? That was simple? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be, I don't need to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but the case was anything but simple. Lord Strongheart, are you... Are you on someone's payroll? You getting paid? The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> Is something funny? No, no, no. My apologies. However... The fact is that, you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that only can be attributed to exceptional talent, wouldn't you agree? Well, I... I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is undetainable truth. Which is precisely why I have prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he gonna say before? He was gonna say that he's super fucking corrupt. Ain't no way. This guy's gotta be like, super corrupt. Come on. Who's your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Is your daughter Miss Swan? Tuck her mother's last name? That, that was the girl from the first trial, right? Elizabeth Swan or something like that? Or, wait, no, it was, a uh, it was Giselle Brett, right? Elizabeth Swan. Who, who the fuck is Elizabeth Swan? Oh, I'm thinking Swan because she had a fucking duck on her head. <laughs> Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me. It's a murder, and the trial starts in ten minutes. Don't worry. It's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as last time. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died, as yet. And the trial will not be today. There's plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours, 43 minutes. And 19 seconds to be precise. <laughs> ah, so the trial's tomorrow then. Is everything alright? 
Oh, yeah. I'm just a little confused, is all. Yesterday's trial was... Well... It left me wondering if I'm really cut out to be a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Narahodo. Can you just call me by my first name, Sasato? I don't know if I could face standing in the courtroom again after Mr. McGilded's trial. Ah, yes. I nearly forgot. There's one simul uh, similarity in yesterday's case. Once again, there is a cur there's currently no one to advocate for the defense. Uh -huh. If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. Here we go again. Ah, shit! Here we go again. Alright, Strongheart. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever... What? Oh, the clock is ever ticking. Why did I have a stroke? <laughs> I couldn't read. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the court sets. Last time you mentioned the 23 hours, you said there was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Narahodo. There is something I would like to ask you. Oh, what is it? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. Yeah? That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would, I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, uh, Cosmo always said he used to, uh, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world worked so he could change our, in Japan. Now that he's gone, I like to work towards that myself, and there's another thing. Oh? Another thing? Continue. On the way here on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He never said... He never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have... He would have done if he had... What? I'm out of time, I guess! <laughs> You're out of time. Well, thank you for your enlightening discussion. Mr. Narahodo, what's all this about? Mr. Asogi never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He has a very spiffy mustache. He'll be able to appraise you of the details. How long has he been standing there? So, I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. Sorry, Mikotaba. There's something very important that I have to do. Kazuma-sama, what did you mean? I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyways, we had better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. What the fuck? Is he eating fries? What are you eating there? I want some. What is that, crepes? It's fries, right? It's fish and chips. That's what he's eating. It's fried fish. And some, and some french fries. Can we trouble you? What do you think? Oh my god, that dude got a long ass neck. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized that. He, I mean, does he have a neck? Could you consider that a neck? It's all face. All face, no neck, or all neck, no face. I can't tell. Lovely weather, isn't it? <laughs> what, what's the weather got to do with anything? <laughs> Listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. 
some flippery, what? Flippery? Frippery? Frippery? What the fuck? About the weather doesn't get, doesn't get everywhere. Wait, what? Some frippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent eating out of your hands. Okay, God. Huh? But Sasada-san told me it was foolproof. I'm a busy man, a very busy man. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers will do if they see this? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? Gregson. No, he's too busy with the bigwigs these days. And all because of some bumpkin who's here in a jaunt. And what? In a jaunt? Jaunt from a country that I never ever heard of. Never ever? Never ever. Here's the ripping sound that my reputation at the yard's going to tathers. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Ryanosuke Narahodo, a defense lawyer. Huh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, Sue. Eh? It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? <laughs> Cesaro, can I marry you? Oh, wait, no, I can't. Uh, I forgot! She's fucking... Ah, oh, she's 16, right? Not even, she's 15. What, how old is she? Fucking... 16. Fucking... Oh, God, I hate the Ace Attorney shit. Look at these characters. They look like adults. Oh, yeah. They're, they look cool. They're actually 12. It is unseasonably fine, I grant you. London's winter don't see, don't see a lot of sunshine. Unfucking believable How does she pull that off? So, <clears throat> Lord Strongheart asked me to fill you in on the case. The name's Tobias... Tobias... Hi, Tobias. The name's Tobias Gregson, Inspector Gregson, to you, from Scotland Yard. Gregson? Hmm, Inspector Gregson. What's the matter with Sasato? Uh, what's ma- Fuck, I can't even read. What's the matter with sasato song? Does this detective's name mean something to her? Hmm. Inspector, are you perhaps... THE Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Mrs. Sato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well. Yes, he features prominently in The Adventures of Herlock Schlums. Oh, in the publication. What's it called again? Rant, uh, rant, rant, fuck, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> That's right. Inspector Gregson and Mr. Schlums enjoy the wonderful, friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Shloms? That's incredible. Is it really that incredible? The dude had like... Constantly got things wrong until like the last second. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Shloms isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with the good... With the goods from time to time. Mr. Shloms is equally compli complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You've earned his... his the fuck, again, damn it. You are in his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of the bad lot of all... Wait, what? Is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Well, Mr. Slums isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not. Thanks to the magazine, my name's known all over London's town now. That's great, isn't it? Hmm. I have to admit... That to start with, to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hands, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it is not. There's nothing more sinister than the man on the on the fuck than a man on the streets. People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under my breath, under my breath, under their breath. I'm sure. All right, you know what? I gotta, I gotta take a moment. Take a moment, calm down, breathe. My nerves are getting to me. 
performance anxiety, you know, just take a moment, calm down, calm down. All right, <laughs> rumors. Are you quite sure? Yes, changes, uh, change, God changes, changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head, stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like I said, they whisper, so I can't catch exactly what they're saying. But I know for I know what folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying. As sure as eggs and eggs. What? As sure as egg is an egg. Or something like that. Eggs is eggs. I get the feeling that detective could be very hard work. Oh dear. Perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. So, about the case that Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we're concerned at the Yard, it couldn't be simpler. Oh dear, that probably means... That as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. Yeah... Ah, um, right about that. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. Well, yeah, if it's pretty shut and close for police, that means as a defense lawyer, you got a losing case on your hands. There's no wiggle room. A young woman was walking along the pavement on, on Briar, 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 Briar. Let's go with Briar. Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Oh, God. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal. But she's still laid up in the hospital, unconscious. That's despicable! What sort of coward would attack a woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with the Cesado takedown, would you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Narahodo. I don't know. Say that's my fucking back that you shattered. Brace yourself, Ryunosuke. You've angered her now. Anyways, after something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So, there must have been something left at the scene that led you directly to the culprit. Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question. Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? Oh, you're not going to say what I think you're going to say. Did he hand himself in? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? Why ever not? See, why, you could just put, why not? Why ever not? Out here making things complicated for the sake of it. Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Baron Von Zykes. Dude. I was about to say we kicked his ass, but, I mean, we, we really didn't. No! <laughs> Sounds like you heard of him, then. Oh, yes. We're very familiar with Lord Von Zykes. Believe it to be the, believe to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Old Bailey. Lord Baron Von Zykes who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGill did tell us about him before the trial, didn't he? When Von Zyke stands for the prosecution, they call the, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. This Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned uh, he's earned that because every defense every defendant he advocate advocates? God damn it. Every defendant he advocates against it's found guilty. Is that is that right? Is that it? Can't read. Some days I have good days, some days I have bad days. <laughs> well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector. That in yesterday's trial against Lord von Zykes, 
Mr. Narahodo secured a verdict of not guilty. <laughs> and what of it? Uh, well, I think... That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No. You really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to the bloke in the end, huh? He's dead. Ugh. You're right. Magnus McGilded came... Uh, God damn it. Magnus McGilded came a cropper in the omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? Wh what are you saying? Look, if Von Zykes could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles. He works magic. Black magic. I good. Oh, fuck, I can't, damn it. <laughs> I have a good, long think about that, if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? Right. Well, I filled you in as requested. And I'm very nearly out of chips. So he was eating fish and chips. So I'd be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Broyer Road, you said, didn't you? I said Broyer. God, what, what name did I give it? Bri Breyer? 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 Breyer. Breyer. It's hard for me to say that. Where the incident took place? That's correct, ma'am. And if I head over there to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. And if I head over there. Yeah, good job, me. You branded him a criminal already? He's as good as... Shaking like a leaf in his cell. He is. He'll give you a chuckle for nothing else. He's inmate 53. Speak to the jailer and he'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thanks. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Natahoto? To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. It takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent, you could well imagine he would be shaken like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So, if I'm honest, I still re I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I like to try. So I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think I, you had to ask? After all, I'm your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes. Let's go. Alright. I guess we would talk to him first. Well, I mean, he's going to be in prison no matter what. Might as well check the scene of the crime first, actually. That bike is bent the fuck up. He's a snowman. So, this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah, look, Mr. Nadhoda. Look at the road. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't speak. Look at the regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know? But Mr. Narahodo, to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the ventures of Herlock Shlomes, but I never dreamed of ever come, I'll ever come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. Bobby's? What? The helmet? 
Of course. I have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your haddy dreams come true. You are weird. Hmm. I don't see Inspector Grixon anywhere. Shall we see if we can sneak past the investigate? Uh, sneak past. Sneak past the invest. Fuck, can't read. Sneak past and investigate the scene of the stabbing? Why should we sneak? I don't want to upset one of these bobbies and be butted out. And be butted on the head by one of them with their metal hemmets. 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 My skull would crack in two, I'm sure. Oh no, an English bobby would never do such a thing. This is the land of gentlemen, you see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have you seen British Parliament? <laughs> Have you seen that? Constantly yelling at each other, ready to kill one another right in front of, right in front of everyone. All right. All right. It's a snowman. What a delightful snowman! I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. It looks a little creepy though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look. You need one if you were out in the freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Get out of my mind! Get out of my head! Stop it! Yes, I know, you're right. Anyways, even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like this to rush the crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's a long dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Y you had to be arrested for that. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still... If it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, I wasn't serious. Get back over here. She's like, I'll fucking do it. If it's the only way. All right, mister. Uh, that's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped with irons. I think perhaps you, you're you beginning... Oh, God damn it! I think perhaps you're being a little too overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh, no. I'm not getting caught. I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure that wide look of panic of yours... A fuck, damn it. Of you are so prone to. It does does you no favors at all. My fucking my mind right now is doing me no favors at all. Alright. What about this guy? Oh, we looked at him already. Um, hmm. Well, let's check out this bike that's fucked up. Oh! A British bicycle. Look. Although the wheel is so misshapen. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden it anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have come extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride them as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not like I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves ta uh, taking both your feet off firm ground seems reckless. If you ever tried to walk on stilts and fall into a river, I know you agree with me. Uh, well, uh, we'll have to hire a bicycle. Wait, what? We'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. Hire? We'll have to hire a bicycle sometimes. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. Higher. Higher? Huh. Hey, what's up with this, uh, with this window being fucked up? That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. 
Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and snagging all over. In fact, it looks in a decently worse shape than the other house around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonable level fours. Hmm. Anything else? There's a pile of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It soon it soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over when I, I damn it. I slipped over when I was walking down the pavement earlier. It seems like it would be a fair safe it'd be fair safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Nanahoto, and dressed all in black. I worry coachman might not see you, and you could What? <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't I stick out like a sore thumb in the middle of winter if I was wearing all black? Wouldn't see you if you could you could be flattened by horses. Well, thank you for the rather small concern. You're rather small. I'm taller than you. Fuck off. <laughs> Am I taller than her? Am I? Do we have heights here? No? Oh, I can't tell. Damn it. Alright. Well, that was interesting. Oh, what the fuck? What happened here? You know, seems pretty weird. This place seems uh, over here under... Oh, wait. No, there's a little bit of thing here. This patch of pavement must have been where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anything. I can't see anywhere the attacker could have been hiding. Oi! Oi. Oi yourself. What are you foreigners doing here? Yeah! Oh, um, we, uh, just investigating the scene. Conspiring with the mustache fellow from Japan, are you? What? Conspiring? Came here to destroy evidence, have you? Get out of here before I give you before I give you an it itting? What it what? A itting? A hitting? Go on. Land a gentleman, my ass, Asado. You shoot us away like rats. Yes, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. It's your fault, Asado, you did this. Hmm. Oh, look at the windows of the building over there. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment? There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Oh, dear. Everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. Smoke is still coming from here, though. The clouds can be so big and heavy in the sky. And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it's known as Foggy London Town. I can just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built, though. Aha, yes! That must be the Crystal Tower! Crystal Tower? Where? Final Fantasy XIV, I'm having flashbacks. Fuck you, Cloud of Darkness. Fuck you, Graha. I hate you, but I still love you. Uh, being built for the great for the great exhibition. That's to open in six months' time. Apparently, it's going to be very striking, glazed on all sides, and the symbolic centerpiece of the exposition. E exposition? E exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition. Ah, fuck. <sighs> Kong Twisters. It's to be the largest exposition in history. Is it? I can't even begin to imagine it. Exhibition. Exposition. My fucking head hurts. Hmm. So, the ground. Check the bike. Check this. Check the windows. See, I didn't, I didn't even mean to check the windows. I wanted to check this thing over here. It's broken-ass rail. It's like something happened in this building over here. Hmm. I think that's everything. I don't think there's more we can do. Hmm. Let me 
see. Yeah, no, I think that's it. We got shooed away. Yep, now we're, uh, we should be pretty good for now. Let's get a move on, shall we? Head to the prison. Let's talk to our, uh, client. I was about to call him culprit. 19th of February, local prison. Cell number nine. So, these are British prison cells. Am I gonna see fucking Larry Butts, fucking ancestor? Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, I haven't experienced, <laughs> I haven't experienced it in Japan myself. I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Narahodo, you're making it seem worse. Well, it is worse. Apparently, our client is in the cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. May 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop hiding in the back of the cell and show your face at once. Uh, am I? Am I a cat? <laughs> as, to yell, as to yell with no name? Calling me by a number is utterly unbelievable, unjustified, unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Eh? Huh? Mr. Narahodo. What? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea. But I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That triad of complaints wasn't Japanese. Hello? Um, excuse me, but who- Shh, quiet! They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening. Even now, I can sense it. Um, right. So, could I ask you who exact- There you are! You come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it. You're a ghost! A ghost? Uh... This guy doesn't seem right to me. It's kind of a tweaker. We mean you no harm, prisoner son. <laughs> Prisoners. <laughs> really? Are you Japanese by any chance? This is... This is... Beyond my wildest dreams! Forgive me for the outburst before. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown, and here I am, in a filthy fix in foreign lands. I call it filthy. What do you say? Frightful? So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of the compatriot... Of what? Of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was a... Most momentously moving moment! Momentously? Monumentously? My bad. I fucked up. All my... You know what happened? All my reading abilities? I used it all earlier this week. Persona 4. Which you should check out the streams for. In the archives. I'm gonna drink my water. For some reason, the back of my throat is like fucking burning. Who could have guessed that this new client, Lord Strongheart, assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? Ah, oh, what compassion my fellow countrymen show to dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. Noble, nurturing, never failing Nippon. He's a fucking Sentai Ranger. Uh, first class lawyer. Oh shit. I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what happened? Why would you be detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can. I will. Shan't say sullen. What? Shan't say sullen and silent. 
shouldn't say it, my bad, stay, fuck. I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he's actually as good as, has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I am a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryonosuke Naruhodo. And I am Naruhodo-san's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably, notoriously named Natsume. Soseki Natsume. All right, Mr. Natsume. You should check this out. Ah, oh, fuck. You should check this out. Yes, yes, yes! The symbol of one of our great empire's first rate lawyers. Which means, of course, you stand by my side, he'll defend me. Oh, no, sorry. That wasn't why I was showing this to you. Huh? Then why else would you show that to me? Oops. In hindsight, it probably wasn't the best idea. Alright. Mr. Natsume, tell me about yourself. So, Soseki Natsume. What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a... Nom de plum... Nom de what? A nom de plum... Plume, non de plume. What do you mean? An alias? That's right, Narahodo san. No, no, no! Don't be so pro. prosaic. Pro prosaic. Prosaic? Prosaic? Whatever the fuck. It's much more refined than that. And haiku. That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go study English. Of course, I had to suffer that misery. And now this? It's beyond the pale. Suffer that misery? Do you not want to study here? No, I mean, I have I have an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But, just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean you can do it. No. What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievable, unjusticely, unreasonable. Unreasonable, yep, I said it like that. I see. Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on weight. Wash, uh, washi, wa washi, yeah, washi. You must be a man of great standing. Oh yes, so I am often told, and often like to be told. It seems. All right. So, tell me about the accusations against you. Could you perhaps tell me what exactly you've been arrested for, S Sosaki san? Sosaki? I didn't do it! I didn't commit the atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no, 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 no. It's alright, the woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife! Right before my eyes! Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I seen the person who did it, don't you think I'd be... Uh, fuck. Do you think I'd be locked up here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's... Un... Uh, incredibly. Unexcusable. Ir irrationally. Inconvenient. So, Soseki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find more about the case. Find more about the case. Find out more about the case. Alright. So tell me what you did see. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and, and heavy fog, uh, heavy with fog. I've been the bookshop. What? I've been the bookshop. Sometimes I just want to die. Sometimes I just want to fucking crawl in a hole and die. 
I've been to the bookshop to buy some books and I was on my way back to my cursed lodgings. Sure, the bookshop wasn't a cursed too. As I was walking along the cursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and just as I went over to talk to her, to talk to her, why did I add all those words? Just as I went over, went to overtake her, overtake, what the fuck? Oh, you mean like walk past her? <laughs> Jesus. Aww. She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed into the cold heart, into the cold of uh, hard stabs of stone on my f what fuck <sighs> she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet thank you thank you brain for fucking reading how terrible i called out to the woman but she didn't move it it was like ghostly ghoulishly grim graveyard Slightly exaggeration, a uh, slight exaggeration there. Perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran. As fast as my leg would carry me back to my cursed lodgings. That's not good. They'll, they'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Soseki. Why do I feel like I'm saying his name wrong? I'm not, though. Soseki, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous. Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? And a young woman at that. I'm different. Uh, I mean, defiant. Defiant? Yeah, defiant. Shy, timid, unsure. I can't talk to people. I, I see. A young woman, unknown to Soseki-san. And at the same time, it happened. Wait, and at the time, at the same time, Bruh! at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Oh, shit. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else at the street, nobody else on the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? <laughs> what conundrum? The Conundrum. What do you mean, Susato-san? What's the Conundrum? Well, if what Soseki-san said, uh, what he just... The fuck, damn it. Mm. I'm in pain here. Well, if what Soseki-san had just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else at the scene. But then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did. Wait. Wait, what? Yeah, she's right. If you weren't seen, then who the fuck, who ratted you out? Surely this man has to be the culprit. You. What did you just say? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Oops. Perhaps I thought a little, I thought that a little too loudly. Is that what's been happening this whole time? I kind of assumed that, that he just thinks out loud. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how does Soseki-san actually come to be arrested? Yeah, see, I mean, <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. It's like, if no one was there and no one saw him, who the fuck knew to, how did they know to go to him? I didn't touch the victim and there was nobody at the scene of the crime. So how did the police even discover that he was there in the first place? Oh yeah, she's right. Mm. It... It was him. That accursed great detective. He led the police to me. Out of bad... All, of all the bad luck. Great detect... Ah, oh, Shlomes. Accursed great detective? Could it be... I shall never forget the man's name as long as I live. With his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Rash, big-headed, busybody. May you, may you be cursed until the end of your days. Herlock Schlomes. I knew it. Mister, Mister Schlomes. 
Herlock Schlongs. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after the nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was going on a uh, I was going on a silk fuck. I was going on a silk fuck. I can't read. Hmm. I was gnawing on a silver of hard cheese. Silver. Sliver. Silver. Fuck. I was gnawing on a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police. Put the weapon down. Yes, it was a fine sliver. And yes, it was hard. But I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting. Dietary. Discrimination. Devils. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That Herlock Schlomes. Uh, it's actually just Herlock Schlomes. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in, dict in, in detection here in London. God, I'm losing my fucking mind. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman, me, this weak, stoop, kidding, uh, kitten of a man. I wonder what great deduction process led him to conclude this time. Did you mean to say that Mr. Slum's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Did you leave anything when you ran? Did you drop a book or something? Well, uh, the thing is, I was I was thrown into a panic when when they barged their way in. Of course you were. That's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing questions after questions at me, and in impossible English. Fiendish, foreign, film what? Flim Flammery. Well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I knew I had to answer, but I I didn't know what to say. Oh my god, don't tell me you just sat there and you just went, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I just kept repeating things like, yes, I do, and I'm fine. Oh, you're a moral. You've been, you've been here for a year and you didn't pick up anything else. I get that you were nervous, but come on, man. The next thing I knew, I was in, I was in manacles. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not fine now. Mr. Narahodo, uh, Mr. Narahodo Esquire. Esquire? Oh. You can't just call me Narahodo. Or just call me Ryanosuke. It's easier to say. And when we're speaking English, a simple mister is more than enough. Oh, yes. Uh, all right. Yes. They've, they've really got... They really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. This fucking... This game is poisoning my mind right now. I gotta drink my water. My lips are getting dry. Can I have a drink? A little sippy from my cup. That's better. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, uh... I guess since we're, you know... Since we're working... Ugh. Sorry, that was yawn. I guess since we're, you know, working with the British rules here, the fact that you're probably committed to murder, uh, it's probably gonna stick. Also, I mean, you're, you major in literature. You can, you know, you can decipher English, Eng English, English literature, right? And you've been here for a whole year. It's kind of hard to believe that you wouldn't know a little bit more English, right? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, 
I'm just a student like yourself. On a study tour. A, a student? I have defended a case in the Old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, not a Hodo. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of lo uh, lo locum, locum, yeah, locum, locum lawyer, I suppose. But but the armband, that's the mark of the defense lawyer from our great empire. It's a keepsake from the man who should be here. He was my best friend. A keepsake. I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, who do you mean? The lawyers, all the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness, why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you have noted before, when it happened, there was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. <sighs> and anyways, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laugh about me before, in my earshot, without any complication at all. Complication. Yeah, I put, I put that word there. I knew it wasn't the word, but I said it. Fuck it. Any trials for this man would be a waste of time, they said, and of course the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half of what he's been saying anyways. <sighs> That's awful. They're wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there in the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's, about these people's country and its great history. But... No one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So at the very least, I like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do that, could you? When I look into your eyes, I can sense it. I can see what you've been through. So Seki-san, it's just that. Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you. Welcome, student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire. We should be going then, Naruhodo san. We have a case to prepare for. Alright. Like she said, I guess we're on the move. The most we can do is check Briar Road again. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware of. Yeah, of course. We're here to investigate. So, have you been to the holding cells, then? What do you make of this criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict for is a foregone conclusion. Stone cold air of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That makes it worse somehow. And how are you in my mind? Stop it. I did show him the armband before, right? <laughs> Scotland Yard about the case tomorrow's trial. Scotland Yard, tell him to get the fuck out of my way. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. 
Ever since I read about it in The Adventures of Herlock Schlums, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard? It's the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh! Hey, you, wait, what? I'm, I'm sorry, wait, hold up. Did I just have a stroke? Or, organ... Organization? Organization? Organization. I'm gonna have to look up how they fucking uh, lo localize this goddamn game because that's not how you spell that. I don't. That's not how you spell that right. I'm not crazy, right? <laughs> oh, you know, I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby helmet. It does make them look the part. Seeing the policemen there and with this helmets. You certainly get the sense that this is the man who will take no nonsense in his duty protecting the city. Oh yes, doesn't it look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes round and rouses all the all the laborers on his belt so that wait what all the all the laborers wait abort on his belt so that so they can get off to work what he wakes people up yep oh okay so i did read that right laborers on his belt what the fuck does that mean what oh on his beat why did i say belt what the hell is wrong with me yep Wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles, that's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has an important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my. And I suppose in between all these duties, bombies are expected to investigate crime scenes as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men kneeling over from time to time, I admit. I'd always dreamed of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Natahoto. Why me? Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. Alright. It happened around 5 in the evening, two days ago, just there on the open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. It is right that the lady is still unconscious now. You mentioned that she's been treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area. I happen to f wait. What? I never said she was a lady. Truth. Is what the fuck does that mean? You mean like in terms of personality? Like, in terms of title, she's not a lady, she can just be like a street urchin or something? It's a map of the local area. I happen to have one on me. You can take if, you take a look if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's yard policy to give lawyers, to give lawyers defendant suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Local map has been entered into the court records. Anyways, 
As far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim of your fellow courtman. Countryman, my bad. So, who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am. The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. What? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Huh? It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses? Alright, well tell me about that. Who the hell are these witnesses, Expector? A fellow and his wife. And the man one of the most reliable and respected citizens of all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked. Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part of the parcel of being a, hop a bobby, catching them bang in the act and all. Hmm. Do you think it might be possible for us to speak to the policeman? Uh, uh, uh fuck, damn it. For us to ask the policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh, go fuck yourself. Oh. I've no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. And that, then. That's that, then. He's got no. He's got no intent. Fuck. Intention. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A police witness? The accident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, you could have warned me of that too. Alright, smartass. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who let you uh, the person who let you to the suspect. I heard that was Mr. Herlock Schlums. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, uh, it was not to me uh, who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Slums was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Slums' inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle. Huh? The man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he'd get his information from, but he turns up at... At all, damn it. But he turns up at the scene of the crime. Wanders around spouting incom in fuck, incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to solve the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He's a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble. Huh? Ever since, th ever seen this before? Oh, yes. That's the magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Schlumps appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, seems to fit... Seems to fit to include several of the... Fuck. Sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called great detective makes a mockery of us. If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Herlock Schlumps tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to frump, only be frumped by the public, thanks to the obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes to trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, uh... It makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. 
No London lawyer worth his salt would touch the case with the bur with a burg 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 barge. Hmm. But a pole. Because the prosecution is being held by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean. That's no way to save the man now. That's no way. What? There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time. It's all a bit strange, though. Sorry. The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once, once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. Master criminals. The violent ones. That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsume wouldn't uh, wouldn't hang for what he fuck damn it. But Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's been accused of, surely. That's just the point, Sonny. Yes, the woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say that the intent could damn it. Couldn't even say that the intent was there. So, this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into. For what, uh, for one of the better, for one of the better phrases. Fucking, I'm losing all my phrases. I can't read. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No. There's gotta be more to it. For some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside his head? Inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really gonna have to face the Reaper again? Lord of Darkness, as he puts it? Well... I don't think we're gonna... We're gonna get more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Narahara, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes. What is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Schlums? Yes, Mr. Herlock Schlums, exactly. Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Mr. Sloans for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involuntary... Involuntary? An involved party in the case. Are you just gonna ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simple... It's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sloans again. The trouble is... We have no idea of the man's address. It's Baker Street! How do you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221 B Baker Street. The most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We better try to find our way there before sasato san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hooray! I'll summon a carriage. So we have... So we have... So we're to have a reunion already. With the great detective, Mr. Sloams. Alright. Guess we're gonna see. We're gonna go head down and see Mr. Sherlock. 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 Elbenmeyer. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Scholz. I was hoping that cutscene was longer. Give my give myself a break. Oh wow, they did. Okay, so they did. All right. <laughs> Th 
they made the inside of the house look close to Sherlock Holmes as, as much as possible. You know, just with a couple of few knickknacks here and there. So, this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. What the fuck is that? It is as described in the stories, Mr. Sato. Um, Mr. Sato-san? Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I suppose they must have been, yes? I never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about this as she seems to be. The detective chases the villains relentlessly as he disappears. Fuck. As he disappears into the fog town and. Damn it. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? The detective chases the villains relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it. The romanticism. Can you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can you, Mr. Narahodo? Oh. I, I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind. I'll just stand here and suck up the atmosphere for a little while longer. Please don't mind me. <laughs> She's obsessed. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anyone home? Oh, do we have visitors? Hey, it's you! Hello, it's a big new case for Mr. Sloan's. Uh, uh, hello? Wait. Aren't you... Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mr. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly e extraordinary? Fuck. To think that the King of Bohemia came to visit this room to ask Mr. Sloan's to take on his case. The King of Bo Boeria? King Wilhelm Grotterskrit. Gr fuck, whatever. Six Sigmund von, von Ormstein, of course. We talking about Sigmeyer and Ormstein? <laughs> Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Schlumps for a moment and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Uh, it's you! I knew it, Susana Sun recognizes her too. Ah, there you are. And taking it with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defendant's antechamber. You never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner! I try, blend, I try blending different leads designed to cultivate... Wait, what? Alleviate, my bad. Alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend the Japanese man. I do wish lots and lots of luck. Uh... Did Mr. Slums tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Slums to you, surely. Mr. Slums was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. He was really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. 
How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things? And perhaps more to the point, why is she here in Mr. Sloan's suite? Oh, silly me. I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. Uh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this... This can't be. Did you... Did you just say your name is... Wilson? What's the matter with Susano-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, uh... I'm Rinosuke Narohodo, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Narohodo's judicial... 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 That's a fucking hard way, hard way, hard word for me to say. Judicial assistant, Susano Mikoroba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Runo. Miss Iris, thank you very much for giving them nicknames. Their fucking names feel like a mouthful at this point. It's a long, you know, it's a, it's a, it's far different from just Phoenix or Nick or Maya and Mia and Pearl. Very easy names to say. <laughs> now we have Miss Susato-san, right? I'd rather just call her Mikotoba, honestly. And then Ryonosuke Naruhodo. Susie? And Runo? <sighs> There's more to this girl that meets the eye. I have so many questions for her. I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. Hey, Miss Iris, check this shit out. Oh, damn it, it's the wrong button, shit. Check this shit out. Iris, can I show you this? Oh, how exciting, what is it? Tell me all about it. Oh, actually, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about it, if anything comes to mind. Why would it? Well, no, I suppose it wouldn't. Tell me, tell me. I did want to hear everything. This hasn't gone according to plan. <laughs> Alright, let me see this local map, actually. I didn't really get a chance to see it. So, I'm guessing this is where the uh, incident started, right? I mean, the incident was, uh, whatchamacallit, happened. The stabbing. So... Damn it, I wish I remember where he said the bookstore was at. But there seems to be a crossroads here on the Kalabash Road and in, in Mirskrum. I don't, I don't even fucking know how to say these names. Mirskrum Mir Street. Hmm. Alright. Wilson, Iris. Wilson. Iris. Wilson. Iris. Iris. It was you that ran it that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the old Bailey. Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this. Uh, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in, in town. Lestrade. Again, fucking. Ugh. Just hearing all these names. Thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh, yes, that's a awkward witness. Wait, what? Ah, fuck. That awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, yes, Genie? She's a professional pickpocket. So, is Lestrade supposed to be like the little urchin boy that Holmes would hire from time to time? To like, go get some information on the street or to tail somebody? Right? The little urchin boy that would come back and give him some information? Oh, Genie? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to the trial 
trial. You're referring to the trial disrupting gun light contraption? Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. I'm sorry, I got interrupted for a moment. Someone's like outside my door making a shit ton of noise. Anyways, I brought Jenny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course. Silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock. Herlock Shalom's. We live here together. I had no idea the great detective had such an inter interesting younger daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Shalom's? Well, I expect you found out that lodgings of any kind in London's are very expensive. So the situation is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommate? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten! <laughs> Ten at last this year. What? Well, what of your mother and father? Oh, no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Wait, you're 10 and you make enough money to be a roommate? Teach me your ways. Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of... Uh, damn it. I am a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Shlomes and... Oh, you got, what the fuck is that smell? It was like someone just took like bleach out or something. What the fuck? It smells like a bunch of like fucking soap powder or something. Oh, you have a copy of of the magazine. I, I'm not saying that fucking name. I'm, I'm done trying. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to the Japan on shit. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley's always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? So that's how you're making the money. Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on the, on the steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing my manuscript for the next issue before you came. That's how you know us? So you're the author? Yes. I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Brand. The Speckled Band? Certainly very familiar. Of course. I always change one or two details in the stories here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Shalom's first thought as well, actually. Yes. And of course, I know that the snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story. Simple poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. So, do you mean to say... Are there stories about Mr. Shalom's that are published in the magazine? All written by me, yes. On my wonderful and very modern top... Top. Typewriter. But all those stories I've ever read... Are written by a doctor of medicine. Dr. John H. Wilson. Sadasan's getting more and more worked up. Oh, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. No, a ten-year-old? A ten-years-old. Well, that's quite incredible. But 
but uh, the Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, uh, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a 10-year-old girl in tow. Don't say it like that, please. Jesus, fuck. I suppose it does, yes. Poor Susato-san. She looks like her whole world has just fell apart. Okay. I'm gonna be right back real quick. It smells like it smells like a bunch of fucking bleach for some reason. I'm gonna check what the hell just happened. See what's going on with that. So I'll be back in like five minutes or something. Alright, I am back. I have returneth. I went to check it out. Nothing. Nothing bad happened. <laughs> nothing bad happened. It's just... 
one of the kids is awake super early in the morning because their parents don't know how to tell them to go to fuck to bed. But, you know, other than that, everything's fine. Let's see, your deductions just now. About before. Yes, yes. What's on your mind, Bruno? Do tell. How do you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have diff that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How do you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. R.S. Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. What? Spectacular? Jesus fuck, here we go with this shit. First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that... <laughs> I don't know why. It's, I, it feels weird to see my own character. I don't know why. See him be like... Not questioned, but... Observed. But you also said that you only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed the passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. You're staring at my breast? How dare you? Indecent. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that, you accepted a case against this particular prosecutioner, telling me that you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. When the fuck did you get that? You were given that when you visit the local prison to meet the... Okay, yeah, I guess that would make sense. That's meet with the suspect, weren't you? They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I didn't realize. And a red stamp on one... Oh, God. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, that you two have already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you were wearing a particular sad expression on your face. So I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I see. But how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home for a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It's obviously assumed, amused him. Assumed, Jesus. Amused him. He told me that he caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Natsume. Now Runo has the fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is, is called the kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyways, it was clear to me that you both came from Japan yourself. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. You're way better than Shlomes. I'll give you that. You actually got it right. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Really is always stabbing... Stabbing? Yeah, stabbing his notes with a knife, you see. He is silly. Stabbing his notes with a knife? Why? And that's all there was to it. Stabbing your notes. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, well, I guess I see it in the background. You ever heard of a thumbtack? Don't those exist by now? I mean, portraits exist, so it's gotta be something like... Well, I guess they would hook them up on nails, right? Hmm. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They were spot on. 
That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You've managed the certain something of Mr. Slim's delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involv involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? Yeah, let's hear it, Iris. What do you got to say for us? So yesterday, Mr. Sloan's apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There was witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt, Suzaki-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. But it seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deduction powers to determine the man's address. There was a lodging room, very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did he find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man shivering in fear. Ugh. Mr. Slum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did! He's a great detective! Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rifled with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear. I didn't realize the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminal in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious on the p -p 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 Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of workings of the world's greatest justice system. I suppose it is, but in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Sasaki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sloams is at this moment? As you guessed, we like to ask him some questions about the case as well. I just bit the fucking side of my mouth when I was saying that. It hurt like a bitch. God damn it. Oh, well. I expected Hurley to still investigate the scene. Of course, case solving... Oh, case of, What the fuck? That... Nowhere near... Damn it. <laughs> of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume? Oh my. Hurley said he was... <laughs> Listen. There's nothing to say about that. I have nothing. I have nothing to remark about that. Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. Lot lodgings. Lodgings. Fuck. Damn it. Words. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where the lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Oh, goody. In that case. Give Greggy this. Give Greggy this from me. Would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? Five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. So we're bribing him? It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust this won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector helpless, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. I'll give it a try. So we're just bribing him. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special bands 
special bands wow special blends of tea so come back so come back again soon would we'll be delighted thank you so much iris reading is hard especially reading out loud well mr nadahoto is back to the scene of the crime so somewhat dubious that uh, shit. Someone is dubious that they would exert any influence over the man of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with Iris's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued. Really? To be continued there? Huh. Really? Oh no. So, oh god, wait, so are we gonna do a trial? We might not even do a trial for this one. We might just, like, prove his innocence and find the real culprit. Either that or fucking part five, episode five, or whatever, that's gonna be the trial. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right, 19th of February, Briar Road. It looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. Perfect. So let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes. And let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at, the, to look at that silver tip Iris gave us. I had to scratch my nose. It's very itchy. All right. Here, oh, wait. Just gotta hand it to him, right? Can I examine it? I just want to see it. Oh, that's nice. Just gonna straight up bribe the guy. You guys are fucked up. Inspector Gregson, do you have a moment? I'm sorry to say I don't. I'm a very busy man. Much too busy to talk to a pair of foreign gadabouts. Gadabouts? What? Got yeah, gadabouts. That's for sure. We have these for you. A present from Miss Iris Wilson. What? For me? From her ladyship. Her ladyship? Her la exactly, her ladyship. Give that here at once. Come on, hand it over. That's for me. Don't wait for, don't wait for me to give it to you, will you? Hmm. What was that coin exactly? It's a silver crown, obviously. But it's a lot more than that. It's well. It's an appear. It's an appear. What? An appearance fee. That's what it is. Appearance fee. What? An appearance fee? Oh, I see. You mean? That's right. For the adventures of Herlock Shalom's. Her ladyship always offers me a little financial reward for featuring me every time. Yes, of course. I know all about your exploits, Inspector. I read them a bit, a bit, a bit, fuck, avidly. Damn it. I'm losing. I left for like, I left for like two minutes, came back, had the ability to read, and now I'm losing it. Of course, her using my name without my say so does make me the butt of the, uh, butt of a lot of unpleasant jokes, but still. I'm sorry, Inspector. That must be difficult for you. Never you mind that. So. What did you want to know, then? Sorry? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that that won't be a problem. Well, obviously, it's not a problem. Go on, fire away. What do you want to know? Well, if you wouldn't mind, Inspector. We'd very much like to know the address of Mr. Natsume's lodgings. Ah, the little knife-wielding mustache Japanese fellow. He lived in, he lived in the right old hovel. It's just over there. He lived right there. Oh. Oh no. How more guilty can you look? On the first floor of the house, <laughs> on the corner where the wreck of a bicycle is propped up. That is nearby indeed. If I remember rightly, the landlord is Mr. John Garadeb. What the fuck is that name? Garadeb? Garadeb? 
Jibber jabber? Alright, well, if you see her again, you make sure to give her ladyship my regards, you hear? I mean it. You tell her that Gregson sends its very best wishes. Don't worry, Inspector. We will. Goodbye for now, then. And long live her ladyship. Long live her ladyship. It's kind of... It's kind of shady that a grown-ass man is worshipping a ten-year-old, but okay. Well, at least he told us what we wanted to know before he left. Yes, so then, shall we go and see what we can find in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? Definitely. Alright, well, we'll do exactly that. Oh, this is pretty nice looking. Hmm. Didn't expect it to look this nice. May I help you? Oh, yes. Would this be the residence of Mr. John Ger Oh, wait. <laughs> I thought we were inside uh, Natsume's home. Indeed it would, sir. And who may I say is calling? My name's Ryunosuke Narahodo. I, uh... Mr. Narahodo's representing Mr. Saseki Natsume. I believe he takes lodgings here. We would very much like to ask him some questions about your client. About your client, wow. Yeah, about your client, ma'am. Fuck, about our client. One moment, please. I shall convey the message to Mr. Gerber. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Did you see that, Mr. Sato? That was a real-life English maid! I know, and I understand, and if I understand, anyone of standing in English society employs a number of household staff. But that was the first time I ever seen one in the flesh. Oh, this day keeps getting better. It certainly feels like we've really arrived now, doesn't it? We need only to meet a butler, and that experience will be complete. Well, I'm not sure if, we're, if we'll go that far, but I understand the sentiment. Thank you for the wait. Mr. Garaba Baba Baba. We'll see you now. Oh my god, that man looks like the fucking Moon Man from McDonald's commercials. Fuck. What was his name? What was the Moon Man's name? Just, just look at that. Good day to you, John Garabadeb, at your service. Pleased to meet you, sir. This is Ryunosuke Narahodo. He's a defense lawyer. Do excuse me do excuse me not getting up. Took a shot to the knee a few years back in the Battle of Miawand. Miawand? Miawand? Mi Miawand? Hmm. Do you know? Earned a medal for my pains, but had to withdraw from the service. Handed over the reins to a up and to the up and comings. So he's a retired soldier. It's a hell of a job getting up and downstairs now, I can tell you. Don't get out much, as you can imagine. Yes, it's quite a climb up here to the second floor, isn't it? I was painting at- I was painting. I was panting at the top of the stairs. You really must take more exercise, Mr. Nahoto. Says the fucking monster that can flip me over. Like half my size. Do you think so? Well, Mr. Mr. Gary, I'll just call him Gary. We'll just call him Gary. That's easy. Hey, Gary. <laughs> no doubt you are very courageous to earn yourself a medal. Oh, it was nothing. The medal's just a fold, a uh, fold, fold, god damn it, fold, fold rule? I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't like to offend the general, though. So I grudging, uh, grud, grunge, grungingly. Grungingly, yes, that's the word. Grungingly displayed it on the wall. Yeah, grungingly, you just you put it there cricket. All your paintings are up there crickly, actually. Crickly, I don't even think that's a word. Why don't you fess it down, Joe? Joan? John? 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 That's how you pronounce that. Let these good people see it properly. 
Jean. Fetch the- Oh, shit! Dash it all, woman! Be careful! Oh, dearie me. I do beg your pardon, sir. You jolly nearly took the skin off my hands. I shall be more careful, sir. <laughs> what? I was sitting there just going- I was about to go like, who pours like that? And the moment I said that, she just starts burning them. So anyways, there you have it. Living, a, living the quiet life now. Yes, I see. Now then, I hear you want to know about the... God, man, are you okay? She was pouring on there for a long time. Jesus. Now then, I hear you want to know about the chap lodgings downstairs, is that right? Yes, we'd be very grateful if you could answer some questions for us. Only, uh, only to please, naturally. Only to please, wow. Only to pleased, naturally. Especially if it helps to keep the peace here in Blightly. You're staring at with your pipe. That's making me uncomfortable. You forged an alliance with the Empire of Japan recently. As I'm sure you're aware. So, this case is very much in the public eye, as it were. Oh, is it? Even had some fims detective poking around, you know? In this old house, would you believe? Yes, Mr. Herlock Shlomes. Hmm, could have been. Didn't catch the chap's name. Not really my cup of tea. All detective business. Oh, but you have a copy of the magazine right here, so... Uh, <clears throat> no, 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 I don't. Anyways, the chap's investigating the foreigner's room as we speak. So, he's in Soseki's son's room. It's a... it's a bally nuisance. It was a bally nuisance. What the fuck? The whole neighborhood's twitching its curtains now. I don't like all the fuss. It's jolly unsettling. Alright. What well, can you tell me about Natsume? About Mr. Natsume, then, Gary. I have to, like, I have to stop myself to remember that. Please do tell us. Ah, yes, the Japanese chap. Only been lodging here for a week. Oh, just one week? So he moved in very recently. I have two lodgers most of the time. One on the ground floor and one just below us. The first- oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Dash it all, John! <laughs> Do you be careful? I, like, the moment I saw her pouring, I didn't even fucking read what he was saying. What was he saying? The first room became available a week ago, you see. There's been... Huh. What have you been stopping this man from saying? Let's see. Let's see. John fetch the... Okay. Hmm. Oh my goodness! I'm terribly sorry, sir. I feel like you're doing this on purpose. If you want to know my opinion, I thought he was a shady sweat from the moment I set my eyes on him. I don't know, you seem to really like the guy. Oh, why? He seems to have a most nervous disposition, always shaking and looking over his sol uh, soldier. <laughs> looking over his soldier. <laughs> looking over his shoulder. This man had shady written across his sweat-soaked brow, if you ask me. I said to myself, John, that man is terrible. Sooner or later, he's going to do something untowards. And I'm rarely worrying about that thing. Worrying about that. Yeah, I just added a bunch of words that weren't even there. We'll be calling this maid as a witness, that's for sure. I assume, I assume now that I said that, she's going to end up being a fucking witness. Von Zyke's just going to call her to the stand. Ah, was there anything else that struck you as suspicious about the man? Hmm. Yeah, so yes, indeed, there was. And she's dying to tell us. The Shady Lodger. Have you noticed anything else about, uh, at all about your lodger, Mr. Natsume? Oh my word, yes. The man was shadier than the orchard. Could you elaborate? Well... Takes a man's rooms. Absolutely stuff full of books, is it? More like any more like anyone could ever read. More like any anyone. Oh, fuck, I 
my reading abilities just stop. My brain is fried. And he's ever so much as passed the time of day with another living soul. I haven't seen a single visitor call. He just trots, trots off to that old bookshop every single day and comes back at five to light the gas fire. And the funny little man is up long past the time everyone else is in the house has gone to bed. Oh, I see. The gentleman on the ground floor goes to bed at around nine at each night. But I never known the Japanese fellow to retire any earlier than two in the morning. Sounds like my type of guy. Could you clarify something, I wonder? What, pray? How do you know so much about Mr. Natsume's routine? Cause you just watch him. Oh. I understand, I understood that neither of the lodgers live on this floor of the house. Is that correct? That's right, yes, they're both below us. On the first floor and street level. Why are you sweating? Are you guys spying on your fucking tenants? Then how is it that you know so much about the livings of your lodgers? The livings, yes, I added that word in there. My brain just does it, okay? I don't know, I might have some fucking form of dyslexia or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> the surprise, uh, the, the, fuck, damn it. The precise times that they come back in the evening, for example. Even the times they go to bed. Oh, come on! Good grief, John! Be more careful, woman. My goodness, sir, I'm terribly sorry. Hmm. Something doesn't add up here. Okay. Alright, yeah, they drew that on purpose. That fucking teapot is endless. <laughs> I wish I had one like it. Jesus. I would drink tea so much. I got a bunch of tea in my room. I got like fucking... If I look behind me right now, I got like, what? Seven different types of tea sitting there? Some of them I don't even like, like chrysanthemum. I thought I would try that and like it, and I'm like, oh man, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't like that, but I still have it. I got a lot of it. Jesus. I do like oolong tea. It's very good, though. That one's soothing to me. Anyways. It seems that the incident took place at around 5 in the evening. Did you happen to look out at the window at around that time? Hmm, the window? Yes. We notice that the window over there looks out over Briar Road. Briar, 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 that's the word. Briar Road. Also, I can't help but notice, is that the only window in the building? Because when we looked outside, all the windows were bricked up. The incident took place on the pavement, just on the far side of the street. Was there anyone suspicious loitering nearby? Five o'clock is dinner time in the Gary household. So I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anything. About How about you, John? No, sir. It would have been dusk outside already at that hour. With the fog as well, I should think it would have been quite impossible to see the other side of the road. Oh, I see. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary, then? Such as? Anything at all, even if it seems unrelated. Can I point something out? So, you know, we played Phoenix Wright on the channel before. You can check out all those playthroughs on the YouTube channel, right, if you want. It's right there. You know, the YouTube channel's right there and on, on the screen right there below. But, um, in all of Phoenix Wright, you know, Phoenix would be the one to ask the questions, you know, come up with different theories and stuff like that. And Maya would just be like, oh man, I didn't fucking, I didn't even know that, right? But in this one, Ryanosuke just, just fucking takes everyone at face value for the most part. And Mikotoba's the one fucking sitting here asking all the questions and shit. She's like, hey man, did you notice that? Like, Sato's more like fucking Mia than Maya. <laughs> hmm, well. Yes, there was something then. Well, it's nothing particularly significant, but around that sort of time, it, fuck. For the love of God, John, watch what you're doing. Oh, dearie me, what have I done? I'm awfully sorry, sir. Do be more careful, woman. 
Of course, sir. If I may, Mr. Naruhalo. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I have an exceedingly good memory, and as far as I can remember, nothing of any significance took place here at that hour. Nothing at all. Oh, really? Mr. Gary? The way you were talking before sounded like ra sounded rather fuck damn it. It sounded rather like there might have been something. Oh well, as I was saying, it was just a trifling matter, really. Nothing of the John Dash it! What is the matter with you? Beg your pardon, sir. Nothing happened. Mm, yes, yeah, so quiet. Mm, yes, yeah, so, mm, yes. Nothing happened. We sat down to a quiet, uneventful meal. Mmm, John? That's right, Mr. Gary. What the fuck is the matter with these two people? It sounds like something happened here in this room on the evening of the incident. They were fucking each other. That's what happened. Getting busy. I wish I knew. Could you? I'm sorry. Like, I <laughs> I know I just stopped speaking, like, right, right there, but I can't help but kind of notice something a little. Eh, I'll talk about it later. Could you tell us which floor Mr. Knott's main room is on? Why, certainly. Just below us on the first floor. And Mr. Sloan's is investigating... Oh, fuck. Is investigating there, even as we speak? Yes. Told me not she may. Not, not his name? I don't fuck. Not his name. Had asked, asked him to look into the matter, so I gave him the key. Wow, you're terrible. Mr. Natsume has engaged Mr. Sloan's services? I doubt it. That's a blatant lie. Would it be alright if I also had a look around Mr. Natsume's room, I mean? Hmm, don't see why not. It's just down one flight of stairs. You know, if we'll find anything that could help us with the case, but we'll have to try. We need all the clues we can lay our hands on, shall we? Yes, and while we're there, we can speak with Mr. Sloan's again. Perhaps he'll be able to tell us more. Alright, cool. Now... If you'll let me examine for a moment. Can't help notice... I can't help but notice a couple of things in this fucking room. As they're going... Oh, around that time? Nothing happened. Alright, so, man's obviously well off by himself, yes? He has probably good money, so he has a maid. Makes sense, cool. Um, so, right off the bat, I remarked on it earlier, but I didn't really pay that much attention to it. All the portraits on the wall are fucking cricket. Right? That's weird. I also noticed some things on the counter are fucking knocked over. That's weird. Uh, their the carpet's just burnt and it seems to be a leftover candle here. So like a fire broke out or some shit. Right? Uh, you know, you got the apron sitting on a cannon. That might just be there to dry though. Who knows, whatever little bucket under it, you know, probably catching some water. Maybe not that important, right? Because maid's doing some weird shit. It's winter outside. You don't want to put the clothes. You don't want to hang the clothes up outside. Um, you know. And his pipe is broken. For a second, I'm like, that's the design of the pipe. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's broken. It's a broken pipe. He's using a broken pipe. Right? Now, I just realized I can look around over here. So let me just check. Uh... This is a mess. That's just busted. Something happened. Something happened. Something crazy happened here. You guys must have had the roughest of sex. Also, this guy is hiding something behind here. Look at the enormous screen. It must have been put there deliberately, surely. Yes, it certainly seems like someone's trying to hide something from view. What could it what could be behind there, I wonder? I'm gonna have a very quick look. Just a little peek. <coughs> Maybe let's not, Mrs. Sato. I think the maid is gonna head us, head us off. 
head us off with a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely check this later. Yeah, but I started to like as he was talking, I'm like, wait a minute, this is weird. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, why would they be hiding something? Oh, because something definitely fucking went went down in this place. It's all right there. Alright. Let's head to Natsume's room. <gasps> he has a cat! Take that cat. That cat is mine now. This is pretty shit. This is a pretty sad ass room. Oh my god, the walls are busted. You're you're looking straight at a brick that oh my god, there's like no ventilation in this room. What just look at this place. And smell it. It's so musty in here. I suppose it's the mountain of old books that are reason for that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that. All the fucking balled up rolls of paper. Just sitting there getting all gross. Trash hasn't been taken out. Whatever the hell is pouring out of that fucking urn or jar or whatever the fuck it is. And you're living in here with a cat. And listen, I get cats are... Cats are very clean, I guess. But if you're living in a place with no ventilation and you got a cat in there... He's gonna reek of shit and piss. I'm just, I'm just saying, cat piss sucks. I don't think I've ever seen so many books in my life. Nope, me neither. It's so dark in here too. Is that the window over there? Well, it was the window, I think. Yes, once upon a time. But for some reason, it's been closed up with bricks and mortar. So, this is where Mr. Natsume lives. By the way... I haven't spotted Mr. Slums anywhere, have you? He's in the fucking pile of books just swimming in there like Scrooge McDuck. Now that's true, but according to what Mr. Gary told us... The Great Detective should be around here somewhere investigating. Is he the cat? He might be the cat. He's secretly the cat. Hmm. Or is he just hiding behind this pillar of books? This is a fire hazard, by the way. Dude put a candle right on top of the books. Right on top of the very old books that have that are super flammable because I bet their pages are just slowly deteriorating. Fuck. Hi, kitty. Oh, look at you. Where are you going? Get back here. Oh my, what an adorable little cat. Perhaps he's looking after all the books while his master is away. I don't know about that. He disappeared into a pile of books just as quick just as quick as a flash. It was a tricolor Mi Mike. Mike. Wasn't it? Do they even have that sort of cat here in Great Britain? Perhaps Mr. Natsume brought the little creature. Creature? Creature. <laughs> the word is the word is creature, and I wanted to say critter, but I ended up saying cre creature. What the fuck? Little creature with him from Japan. That made me feel homesick now. Already? You've only been in the country for two days. Oh, the cat's gone. There's a bag here. Hmm book some i guess this is is this where he, does he sleep oh god he sleeps on the floor <laughs> jesus i sleep on floors before from time to time i got all these books stacked up here they're almost reaching the ceiling they're all works of english literature and they all smell so musty with this volume of books to uh to hand god damn it to hand you'd never be short of reading material would you no, what a dreamy idea. A bad dream, maybe. For me, at least. Mind you, I don't imagine the books that at fuck that at the fuck damn it. I don't imagine the books that's at the bottom of the pile now will ever be read again. Huh. So reading is an experience that comes, but once in a lifetime, just as the tea ceremony teaches us. I certainly didn't expect the con conversation to turn. Oh, fuck. 
I'm losing my ability to read. I certainly didn't expect the conversation to turn down the path of tea ceremony philosophy. Cool. Uh, well, let's check what this one is. Seems very important. The desk seems to be welled into a into a crevasse between the mountains of books on the other side. On either side, my bad. I suppose Mr. Nasme would sit there and read while stroking his cat. Let's hope that's the only thing he's stroking while he's reading Jesus. All those boiled up pieces of tissue hanging over there. <laughs> but surrounded all sides. Oh shit, what does this dude eat? <laughs> I just realized that. Got no fridge or nothing. I mean, when does this take? This only takes like, this only takes place like a century before, right? A hundred years? So, and Phoenix Wright takes place in the future, right? So it's the future. No. I guess at the time it came out, it would have took place in, like, the future, but I guess, considering now, it would be, it would be modern. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but surrounded by all sides, that's shit, but surrounded on all sides by these towering old tomes, surely he dreamt of books every night as well. Yes, he must have done, mustn't he? Oh, what's this? It's a receipt from a second-hand bookshop. Your books. Oh yes, Mr. Nelsman names is on it. Names? <laughs> His name is on it. The date of purchase. Uh two days ago at four forty five PM. That's the date of the incident. That's just a short while before he was embroiled embroiled? Yeah. Embroiled in in terrible stat fuck damn it. I'm losing my mind. I need to drink my water. You know, I wish I had someone else here where I can just be like, fuck it, I'm done reading I'll tap out, take like a five minute break that would be nice wouldn't it he must have been on his way back from buying some old books how long have I been streaming for by the way about two and a half hours oh well there you are just like I said hiding in the books oh look Mr. Nathoto aha there he is where did he appear from? He seems to be engrossed in the pages of an old book. I hope he won't mind if we disturb him. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he's hoping for. He sat there and posed up. He's all like, I gotta look cool when they find me. I gotta be interesting. Hello, Mr. Shlums. Ah, oh, you two. Good day. Now, let me see. Where was it that we met? Oh, Mr. Shlums. We were together on the SS Bureau. Ah, yes, of course, the Bureau. And let me see. What happened on the voyage? Don't you fucking dare. Don't you do it. It was Cosmo Sogi. He died tragically. But you were a great help to us. Ah, yes, but of course, the case of Mr. Sogi. It was the one with the snake. Snake? Why'd I say it like that? With the snake, wasn't it? Oh. Well... You seem to remember. Something of it, at least. What an honor to be remembered vaguely by the great Herlock Sh What the fuck? <laughs> what an honor to be remembered vaguely. This is Mr... Oh, no, 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 my dear madam. Hold your tongue. I pride myself on my superior powers of recollection. Your names are safely recorded in my brain addict. Miss Narahodo. And Mr. Sasato. Exactly, you got it right, 100%. Try the other way around, schlums. <laughs> I lose the first round. Yeah, it was close enough, though. At least you got the names right, just assigned it to the wrong person. In truth, I have hoped to invite you both to my Baker Street suite the day we arrived in London. But some Scotland Yarders ambushed me at the railway station and whisked me away to a, scene, to a crime scene. It was an entirely trivial case, of course. I solved the matter in no more than 30 minutes. So, they apprehended Soseki-san in that short amount of time? I'm afraid the... Pru uh, pru fuck. The pru the persuance... Persuance, that's the word. I'm afraid the persuance of a new case has dulled my recollections of my past involvements a little. A little? It is a mistake to think that one brain addict has elastic walls and can 
incandescent, distinct, distinct. To any extent, I do my best to forget useless facts, lest they should elbow out of the useful ones. Out of, out of the useful ones. Yes, there are my own words of inf, inf, intent. Mm. Inimitable wisdom. That's how you say that word, right? Uh, I don't even fucking know. My brain is gone. I'm sorry. You know? From an adventure entitled A Study in Scarlet. Please, there's no need to quote yourself. I don't always remember my pearls of wisdom, but unfortunately, my associate pins them beautifully. He means Iris. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> I'm losing all sense of concentration here. Been reading aloud for like two and a half hours. Come on, that takes a toll on your brain. My brain has already been taxed enough today. We have some extremely important questions to ask you about the trivial case you mentioned. Goodness, what an earnest expression. My dear madam, I should be only too pleased in this murky room is an apt place to discuss the murky case. All right, cool. Talk to me, Shlums. Tell me about his arrest. You know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Soseki Natsume. It seems that you assisted in his arrest, Mr. Shlums. For the stabbing of a young woman outside here on Briar Road. Hmm, Natsume, yes, I believe it was a name rather along those lines. Mr. Natsume denies it. Was it really justifiable to arrest him on so little? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sato. But I have not the slightest idea what you mean. What? I can't believe he was looking Sasano squarely in the eye while feigning ignorance. I assure you, I am not merely feigning- Am I fucking speaking out loud? It would appear as if the pair of you are under some misapprehension. Did I even read that right? Misapp misapprehension? Yeah, 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 I did. Oh, how? I assure you I have no recollection of accusing your stoomed compatriot of the crime. But that doesn't make sense. The good detective of Scotland Yard made the following request of me, and I quote verbatim. We need you to ascertain the identity and whereabouts of a man seen fleeing the crime scene. A man seen fleeing? There was a number of books scattered on the pavement at- I- that's what I fucking said! Mm. He left that fucking, uh, detail out of his story. He's like, I don't know how they found me. I'm like, did you drop any books? He's like, yeah, dropped everything. <laughs> From the book plates, I was quickly able to determine the bookshop in which they have made- which they have been purchased. On speaking- wait, the fucking- wait, what? The fucking police needed your help to do that? Really? How fucking incompetent is Scotland Yard? Well, I mean the fictional Scotland Yard, not the real one. <laughs> On speaking with the proprietor, I was immediately led to this address, elementary, wouldn't you say? I believe there is a receipt around here somewhere from the establishment in question. So you don't think Mr. Natsume is the culprit, then? That I could not tell you. But it was aggravatingly, uh, aggravating my facilities, hence why I returned here. However, this place is such a trove of fascinating books, I found myself quite lost in... in bibl... in bibl... fuck. Bill and Bill Fmerge words. <laughs> Bill Bill of Fuck, I can't even say it. I can't even say it. Fuck, damn it. I know the word, I just can't say it. My mouth just won't. That's one of the words I do know. Do not be deceived into believing that I am a man of, le of leisure. No, no, no. Oh dear. Alright, what about the landlord? What do you know about him? Um, tell me. Have you encountered the landlord of these lodgings? Yes, Mr. Gary, a retired military man. It was the first time I've ever met a soldier from the Great British Institution that is the service. That is in the service. Blah, 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 blah. And it was the first time I've ever met a maid from the Great British Institution that is service. 
<laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. I do apologize. As you may well be aware, many households in London's employ a maid. Many households? Yes, I read as much of my great British primer. Many households? There's that many rich people in, in the olden times? And so, conversingly, whether or not a household employs a maid has come to has come to bestow the social standings of these dwelling of those dwelling within uh, therein. Fuck, damn it. Betoken their social standing. Sorry? Yeah, can you use a fucking more simpler word for my stupid brain? Thank you. Put simply, my dear fellow, those who employ at least a single maid are considered middle class. Those who do not are beneath that. Really? So there's just that many people who have fucking some money. In the upper echelons of society, of course, households employ enough staff to constitute a large family. Goodness, how extraordinary. As you can appreciate, for those, for those on the precious boundaries between the middle and lower class, being able to afford just one maid is of the first importance. I had no idea. And it is for precisely, damn it! And it's for precisely that reason that I find great stimulation in the situation upstairs, specifically in the retired army veteran, Mr. John Gary, or Garadab. Oh, affably, affably, affable, affable. Is it really necessary to use that word? As he is, the fellow is hiding something. Well, that's super obvious. Whether or not it's it's imposed on the circumstances of this case, I'm not yet unable to ascertain. I'm thoroughly lost on what he means to say. The dingy room. It's ucky and fucky in here, dude. This room is thoroughly suffocating for the soul, my dear fellow. I assure you, any man who lo who lo fuck damn it, any man who lots is to f fuck damn it. I assure you, any man whose lot is to dwell in this place, whose lot is to dwell in this place, yep, mm -hmm, that's a fucking sentence, all right? Dude, fucking fucked up English people in your fucked up language. Which is weird to say because America fucked up the language even more. <laughs> Such as this will stab somebody sooner or later. So basically what you're saying, someone who lives in a dark, danky place is gonna fucking do something heinous. Mr. Natsume has stabbed no one. <laughs> but sooner or later, as I said. It might be someone else, it might be himself. I fucking kill myself if I lived in that room. <laughs> I don't believe that that's the issue here. About this dark little room, Mr. Slums. This fucking super fire hazard. Uh there is there is no there's no longer a window. Do you have any ideas? No window. Well, I mean, I can clearly see that there is a window of sorts. But it's been completely blocked with bricks. Oh, I see. The answer to that question is quite simple. Window tax. D fucking excuse me? Window tax? What is that? Are you telling me? That the landlord boarded up the fucking windows just to save a, a couple of bucks so he can pay for its maid? Surely, not a tax on windows. Precisely that. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Oh my goodness. Until relatively recently, a tax was leaved on households in this country by the number of their windows. I said leaved, by the way. Levied is the word. Those of lesser mean having inherited... Uh, fuck. Those of lesser means, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps, probably close windows up. I had a stroke reading that. I'm sorry. Can I? What? Those of lesser means, those who have less money, have inherited a, uh, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps. Okay, so people who didn't have money but inherited, but inherited big ass houses for big ass families, 
started boarding up their windows because they can't pay it. Alright. I'm sorry I had to decipher the fucking hieroglyphics. That was your sentence. Jesus fuck. While the rich open windows here, there, and everywhere. In an effort to curry favor with those in power by furnishing them with large sums of tax money. Huh. Wait, what? <laughs> what? In an effort to curry favor with those in power by furnishing them with large sums of tax money. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the rich people who have enough money to pay for their windows are hoping that with the window tax, they can get the favor of the, po of the fucking politicians by throwing money at them for the window tax. How awful and unjust forcing people to live in rooms devoid of light. Indeed, disease was, rifled as a, disease was rife as a result. Oh, since no fresh air was coming in, everybody was getting fucking sick. And then the rats showed up on the boat and fucked everybody's day. <laughs> so some 40 years ago and thereabouts, the Windows tax was abolished. Oh, but okay, so that's gone now. But I'm guessing it would just cost more money to tear it all down, right? But its legacy remains, as you can see. And, and, uh, and square, square, squalid? Squalid? Squalid lodges such as these, for example. I suppose Mr. Nats may stri uh, stripend, stripend, for living here in London isn't very generous, perhaps. You can just say fucking allowance. You don't have to say that word. It's easier. It would appear so. I'm, uh, I've done a little digging. And discovered that these lodgings were offered as an extraordinarily low price. Well, yeah, if you don't got windows and the room is small and the fucking walls are falling apart. And I, I'm not sure what the fuck that is back there, but it, does that just lead to gas pipes? That fucking red, red shit that's locked up? What is that? Does that lead to water pipes? What, what does it do? Because the room is so awful, I would think. Apparently, Mr. Natsume only moved here about one week ago. Yes, that's correct. However, I don't believe the low rent is, ex is explained by the shabby nature of this combination. Yeah. Maybe he just got kicked out for being a terrible tenant and he had to find somewhere that was already a piece of shit. Oh? Still, that is a little relevance here. A matter not worthy of further intention. Attention. Are you sure? I'm curious now. Well, I believe I told you all I can now. Thank you, Mr. Slopes. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Narahodo. Was it not your intention to become a practitioner of law? You remembered that, didn't you? Oh boy, he remembered me! Well, you perhaps being offering your services in this very matter, I wonder? To the occupant of this room, Mr. Natsume, was it? I'm not sure. Not sure? On what grounds? Well, I actually defended someone in court here already. Really? Well then, I congratulate you, sir, on, on an ambitious release. Uh, release? Realized. I've been doing that this whole playthrough. Every time I see the word realized, I just say released. And so promptly, too. The thing is, it's really made me question things. Am I right to believe in my clients? To trust in their innocence? Yes, trust. Pixie dust. Mr. Slums? Mr. Natsume didn't do it, did he? <laughs> My dear fellow, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, but... I thought that's why you were here. Didn't you come back to investigate? Ah, yes, that was indeed my initial intention. But there are simply too many fascinating books here. I can impossibly ignore them. Oh, I see. Nevertheless, there are two facts that I can state quite unequivocally. The man who fled the scene of the murder two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room, and... 
There are witnesses who swear to have seen the same man commit the crime. That is all I can say. Huh? I'm sorry? The man who fled the scene of the crime two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room. Yes, yeah, true. And there are witnesses who swear to have seen the same man commit the crime. I mean, that doesn't seem like much information there. We already knew this, but I feel like he's trying to hint at something. Uh, and one more thing. Okay. Oh, what is it, Mr. Slums? Tell us. I cannot say with any certainty whether or not it is of relevance to this case, but I'm quite sure that the retired army man who owns this property is hiding something. Mr. Gary is? Mr. Sloan said as much before, actually, didn't he? Anyways, at present, this is really all that plays on my mind in relation to this case. Mr. Narahoto? As yet, our investigation has uncovered nothing that can help establish Mr. Natsume's innocence. No, you're right. Perhaps it's time we probed a little deeper into Mr. Gary's secret. Just remember, I cannot be sure whether the landlord's secret will prove to be of relevance or not. But I wish you every uh, shit. But I wish you every success, of course, Mr. Naruhodo. Naruhodo. Hmm. A busy man indeed. He's gone back to his books in the corner of the room. How can you stay in a room like that? Jesus. Just it's fire hazards everywhere. Oh my god, it's so it's bothering me because fucking this shit looks like it's about to fall over. Oh just light everything up. It's over. God. Oh shit. Um I don't think there's nothing else to really look at in this room. Let him continue his reading. Got the lucky cat. There's a little box up here. Wonder what that is. Alright. Let's, uh... Shit, wrong button. There we go. Let's get back to Mr. Gary. Oh. Okay, I thought I couldn't go there for a moment because I pressed the button and nothing happened. Oh, they are not in here, are they? Did they leave? Wait, there's no reason for them to leave. He has a fucked up knee. Ah, oh, you paragon. That's right, Moon Man, I'm here. Tell me, what's the detective chap? I forgot his name. Still hard at work down there. Mr. Herlock Shalom's? Ah, yes. Rings a vague bell. All the detective business isn't really my thing, I'm afraid. Well, Mr. Slums is in his element down there. Golly. Golly? Jolly good show. Another cup of tea, if you please, John. Pour it regularly this time, please. Now then, why don't you tell me what... <laughs> For the umpteenth time, woman, will you watch what your... What your bully... What? What your bully... 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 Fuck. Bolly well doing. Bolly. Hmm. Maybe they just didn't want to say the word bloody. Well, I don't... I, you know what? Fucking, if they wanted to say the word bloody, they would just say the word bloody, right? Because we're already talking about murder and shit. I shall be serving dinner shortly, sir. Mm, uh, yeah, of course. Frightfully rude of me, but I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to take your leave, if you'd be so kind. Oh, yes, of course. We are deeply grateful for all your assistance. Not at all, not at all. Uh, don't get much chance to talk with younger foreigners like yourselves. With younger? My bad. With young foreigners like yourselves? <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Best of luck and all that. Perhaps you could see yourselves out. According to Mr. Sloams, Mr. Gary is hiding something. And since no other avenues of investigation seem open to us at the moment, perhaps we should do some digging. I mean, we... I, I mean, we... <sighs> We have to leave because we can't really do anything. I guess we can just kind of look around. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, what is he doing over there? Mr. Sloams. 
Ah, uh, we meet again, my dear fellows. We just walked away from you. Good gracious, when did you sneak in here? Herlock Schlumps, sir, at your service. Whatever were you doing over by the window? Looking at the scene of the crime. Uh, I'm giving to watching... What? I'm giving to watching the evening sky as the sun sets, madam. Yet sadly, cheerful as the room downstairs undoubtedly is, it lacks an aperture for such observation. So, I took the liberty of borrowing a small corner of space by the window up here. W well Keeping an eye on the one- <laughs> Keeping an eye fuck. Keeping an eye to one's windows at dusk is prudent thing to do in London, I'm gathering. Uh, and one other thing, Mr. Nadaholo. Oh, me? I thought perhaps you might be in need of a certain great detective's great mind. Uh-huh. Wait, he's not talking about... Is he? I didn't expect to be going through that again so soon. Do you mean Mr. Slumps? There is a mighty secret in this modest room. My eyes see even the most trivial of trifles. I take it you pre you're prepared, Mr. Narahodo? I think so. There's just time enough for one of my greatly admired great deductions. Let us conclude the matter before dark. It's time for that fucking song and dance we do with this man. Mr. Gary. Though it would seem you are a military man of considerably distinguished service, your standing as a landlord is most certainly not what uh, one might call its first rate. Hmm? I'm afraid, sir, that it's all too clear to me. There are two conclusions I have been able to draw by carefully observing your living arrangements. One, you're poor as shit. <laughs> I beg your pardon? The first is that, even as we speak, you are concealing the presence of a, for of a ferocious beast in your care. <sighs> and the second... Is that the result of the beast violence rampage you lost something very dear to you? So the cat is his. He owns the cat, yeah? Maybe that's what happened yesterday? Cat knocked over something, caused the fire? Uh, yeah. It's not a huddle, look. The old man's broken out in cold sweat. Unbelievably, it seems Mr. Sloan's conclusions are both on sp are sp but fuck damn it are both spot on how how could you possibly how could I possibly know you mean to inquire the answer could it be uh, could it be simpler sir for in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning I am the king of beast uh. and I know I know only too well that wild beasts are not easily tamed. So, shall we begin? Once again, her Luxlums is proud to present Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. The game is afoot. Topic 1 Nature of the Beast. It certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see. That a fearsome beast has been on a rampage of late within these four walls. Thus, we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? Ah, for a man with a military breed, uh, breeding, well, breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. I. Your fruit, your fruit, fruit, fruit of, that's the word, your fruit of glance, Mr. Gary, leads us directly to the answer. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by the lion statue. Yes, though in though an army man, you appear. Un, uh, damn it! Fuck! I'm having a hard time reading this shit. I gotta take a drink of my water. Sometimes I wish I had a lifeline, you know. It takes a toll on you. It does. Yes, though an army man, you appeared unimposing at best. A fact that has fueled your admiration for the mighty lion 
the King of Beast. What is this piffle, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you have a living, breathing specimen shipped from India, which you tried to keep in very in this very house. What? God, don't give that old man a heart attack, shit. Yet living with such a wild beast proved more difficult than you can imagine. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. Well? Yet, as we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to? Madam? B me? I pray you do not concern, uh, con that's concern. Consider me un unshiverous, unshiverous, unshiver, unshiverless, that's the word. But it's a pain to me, with one glance in your direction. It, it is? It is a pain? It is a pain? Did I just say that? It is a pain? Your dress pocket gives us a handsome clue as to what these current whereabouts. But protruding from from it is a hand billed advertising a circus show. Oh. Yes. You sought to dispose of this terrifying lion, Mr. Gary. A batty at Batty Circus. A traveling show currently soldiering in a nearby park. I can't believe I fucking was able to get that word out within two seconds. <laughs> in a nearby park. I have observed the tents. You sold the Savage Lion, sir, into the circus troop. I most certainly did not. I believe I have made my point. The fearsome beach which ran amok in this room was an Indian lion. And a simple visit to the circus will now reveal the lion's pre uh, prancing dutifully. Jubilant? Fuck. God. Jubilantly? Jubilantly? Jubilantly. Yes, that's the word. Through a ring of fire. Conclusion! A rampaging as... As t Fuck, damn it, whatever. Aftermath. Now, Mr. Gary. It is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed. In the bath pose, the distress... Uh, what? In the blade... All right, <laughs> I don't even know what that word is. In the, in the blithe, blithe, whatever. In that pose of distress, this loss has caused you is veritably tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel being revealed by the supporting arm. A mis, uh, a mid fist of tears. What? A mid fist of tears. What the fuck? Okay, whatever. You, you, you let your beloved beast go. The strain of losing something so dear to you is clearly visible in your visage. Nonsense, man. I simply... But what we must now ask ourselves is the true cause of the... The true... The, 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 the true cause of the pain. And we need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Yes. It's a pile of bills that has given us rise to the pains of your suffering. Every envelope contains another demand for payment. Ah. Uh, for cartloads of meat, potatoes, wheat, and tea. Indeed, feeding your beloved has had a devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so, you have no choice but to let it go. Yes, well, uh... Now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious bees carried out one last unimaginable... Uh, unimaginable... Attack! Unimaginable? Yes, unimaginable. The aftermath of which can only be clearly seen by observing the carpet over there. A very expensive woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dearie me. What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Uh. This time, madam, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently... In, what? Inadvertently, that's the word, inadvertently, fuck. Inadvertently uh, revealed the truth to me. The wandering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. 
Yes, to explain the dire state of carpet, we need only look at the Tower of Cakes. Huh? There is no creature more dangerous on this earth than the beast with the unsatiable appetite. What is or what is not once said by the by a certain noble woman, if they have no bread, let them eat cake. Food is at the heart of all tragedy, in fact. Whatever do you mean? Having tired of <laughs> having tired of the taste of cake, the beast began to stalk its nearby prey. I mean, it's nearby prey. Yeah, sure, whatever, whatever. I'm sure I need not spell out the nature of this final act of destruction carried out by the beast. There's only one logical conclusion. Worked into a frenzy by hungry, by hungry, wow, by hunger, the lion attacked and ate the carpet. The teeth marks in the carpet are a perfect match with those of a lion's I once saw in India. Shalom's, you are a piece of work. So you fed your lion cake, cause you couldn't fucking pay it with meat, and potatoes. Thus concluding. Herlock Shalom's great deduction of the beastly puzzle. Alright, Herlock. <laughs> oh, come on! What the hell's the matter with you, Joan? You're pouring scalding hot tea all over me! Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gary. I'm afraid I didn't notice. My deductions can be... St can be startlingly, startling, startling, startlingly. Ugh, words. Sharp. It stands to reason that your cub overrunneth, <laughs> overrunneth, or runneth over. Indeed, my revelations can make people spill tears at times too. Oh. Um, Mr. Sloans? Sorry to butt in again, but once, uh, but could I make an observation? Why, certainly, Mr. Nonohoto. What is it? Again? Well, your deductions just now. Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Indeed. It is the only explanation for the facts. The terrifying truth all too often lives beyond the realms of common sense. But wouldn't it be an idea to consider what lies inside the realms of common sense as well? But... If an uncaged lion can run amok in this very room... Surely Mr. Gary and his maid would have been hurt, or worse. Ah, that's where you are stuck. No doubt, the former military man held his own against the beast using the large cannon. <laughs> I thought you say they sold the lion in the circus. And what about the food? Meat and potatoes are one thing. But I don't believe I have ever heard of a lion that drinks tea. Ah, my dear Mrs. Sato, it occurs to me with some regularity that in repers that in re God, in respect in respective of race and breed, whenever anyone lands on Great Britain soil, they are infused with a highly appropriate taste for afternoon tea. When in Britain, you gotta drink tea. If you don't have your fucking tea in the afternoon, all hell breaks loose. Oh. What a glorious nation. Oh, notion, my bad, nation. Notion. Well then, Mr. Narahodo, it's your turn to shine again. I had a feeling that was coming to that. A slight massage, the, uh, massage? Yeah, massage. A slight massage. That's all Mr. Sloan's deduction needs. You can do it. Excellent. I've been waiting for my trusty partner in deduction to set for it, Mr. Narahodo. We don't even know yet whether or not this is gonna help with Natsume's case. Still, uncovering the truth is always worthwhile, whatever the motive. At least, that's what I want to believe. Let us start again. From the beginning of Herlock Shlom's Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. God, my throat is starting to kill me. Hold it, Shlom's! Nature of the Beast. All right. Shouldn't take a great detective to see this. That shit over there is all fucked up. Thus, we're faced with the question, what form of the beast that fucked it up? 
Ah, for the man with military breed and your eyes uncommonly candid, you're giving away some important clues. Your glance, Mr. Gary, leads us directly to the answer. Quick clack. True nature of the beast running rampage is the lion statue. I really didn't see the lion thing coming. Really? Because I did. That thing stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> no, but if you observe his reactions, it rather seems as though some beast is indeed run amok in this room. Ah, uh, yes. Something with a very fierce nature. But it couldn't have been a lion transported from India. So what is it then? We must follow Gary's glaze. Glaze? Yep, his glaze. Put it on that turkey. Mm-hmm. Delicious. What will it lead us to? Probably a picture of his cat. Let's see. The hell is this? Photograph frame? Take that! Behind the lion statue of the mantelpiece, almost deliberately hidden from view, is a photograph. Though I have yet to examine in detail, I can assure it to you that it holds the answer. Because I'm simply employing an extremely advanced detec uh, detection technique called jumping to conclusions, you see? What precisely was your, <laughs> what precisely was your intention with that, Mr. Naruto, though? Just following the natural progression of the deduction, sometimes the truth hurts. Well, the truth is, you do not have a turn for the observation or deduction. Did that hurt? Oh, yes, a lot. Huh, really? All right. Well, what do we know uh, with certainty is that destructive nature... Okay, cool. It's the same thing, right? Let's see. Yes, if we investigate thoroughly enough, we got to find the answer. All right, well, fucking stop talking to me and I'll see it, all right? I wish I could examine it a little bit more. What is on that photograph, actually? Is it him holding the metal? Let's see. Mortar shells. I wish I can, you know, change the... Change the... Change the camera angle a little bit more, you know? The lion statue. Is it the lion statue? No, it can't be. I don't want it to be the mortar shells, but I guess it might be the mortar shell. It's the only other thing I can look at here. Yeah, let's go with the mortar shell, I guess. Take that! True identity of the beast? Yeah, I don't think it's the mortar shells. Uh, war is good for nothing, only brings destruction. <laughs> Just turn into fucking snake for a moment, like old man snake. War. War never changes. <laughs> I guess it is the lion statue, right? It has to be. If the cat is his, the lion would remind him of a cat. And it's the only other thing there, so the lion statue. There's no beast more fierce than a lion. Hmm. So, must have been a lion. Are you quite concentrating? You identify exactly what I did. I don't know, maybe you were fucking right. Can I change the fucking camera angle? Alright, Holmes. I get it. Alright? Listen. I'm not this dumb. <laughs> there we go. Now I can start skipping through some shit. Fucking, yeah, I can't really. I can't really, hmm. What the fuck is this man looking at? Mortar shells. It's not the photo frame, shockingly. Gotta be something like very specific. What really caused the damage in this room? Is there like a fucking like a candle holder or something? 
candelabra somewhere that I can't see? Because I can't see shit. <laughs> Not the mortar shells, obviously. I'm pretty sure I can't choose anything over here. What am I looking for? I don't, I honestly don't see what I'm looking for. I really don't. Like, I'm hoping to find, like, a fire poker or some stupid shit peeking out of somewhere at, like, a certain angle. And I can only move the camera left to right. What am I missing here? There's only three things that I can... What do you want from me, video game? <laughs> trying to examine everything as carefully as possible. I just, I just don't know. I honestly just really don't know. I'm stumped on this. missing I'm gonna feel really stupid when I find it too the f what the fuck for I really don't know what the hell I'm looking for because I don't I don't see anything but the photo frame the line and the mortar shells what the f I don't There's no other camera angles I got. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I might, I'm, I'm just gonna look for the answer. <laughs> I'm just gonna look it up. Cause I really don't know what the fuck. Like I was hoping that I can like click whatever's being blocked from here, but I just don't see anything. Metal, not the jacket. Don't. Don't know. I don't know. There's nothing else here. I want to I want to say something which is I feel super stupid, right? But to be fair to be fair to be fair any time that you can examine something, the game tells you you can examine it by having the little A button there at the bottom to say Hey, you can look at that, right? So when I don't see that there, I just don't press it. 
because there's no reason to. When I clicked on the photo, I originally thought when I presented it, he was just gonna, him and Mikotaba was gonna have their little talk that they do. But I guess I had to click on the examine thing. Even though they didn't tell me I could examine it, but that's okay. Appears to be from his wedding. Looks very happy, doesn't he? He does, but can you make out his bride? No, how unfortunate. Something must have struck the glass directly over the woman's face. Wonderful. What happened probably uh, best not to delve too deeply there. So, is his... His wife is his fucking... Whatever. Newly bride. <clears throat> there we go. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by the newly bride. Precisely, Mr. Nutterhood, though. No other explanation could possibly fit. Yes, this frame printed, uh, frame print pictures, uh, shit, I can't even read. This frame print pictures your wife, Mr. Gary. And while we lament the fact that her face is obscured, we can still make out her mighty arm and note that considerably horsepower they might contain. Oh, uh... Indeed, surely any woman of such powerful constitution would be honored to be described as a beast. Uh, honored might be stretching it. Too late. The fact remains that the beast which is so clearly savage this room was your wife. Oh shit, I just noticed something. He got a slap mark across his face. The chilling... <laughs> That's what she was looking at where she slapped him. Chilling traces of wild rampages are still very evident. Yet when we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where the hell is this person hiding, you may ask? Madam? M me Pray you not consider my, uh, you may think that I'm too forward. But your pocket. I've been looking at it. The poor, the poor, fragile, defenseless woman is besides herself. Well, I don't know about fragile. Oh, dear. Anyways, Mr. Sloan is quite right. <laughs> She's like, come on, man. That was a low blow. But it seems that there may be a clue, as her whereabouts. A clue that this maid is trying to hide. I wonder where his wife could be. I mean, it's the maid herself. Really? I can't do that? All right. Next time, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna not. <laughs> I'm just gonna not. I'm gonna stop jumping to conclusions, right? Take a bit more caution when looking at it. She's probably wearing a wedding ring, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, Schlumps. Let me take a good look at her. Shut the fuck up, you two. Stop button in. Let me do my thing. Alright, let's see. Gotta have a wedding ring or something. Got that slap mark on his face, it's fucking strong. Let's see. I'm trying to look to see if I can find. Ha ha! A wedding ring. Your wedding ring gives us a handsome clue as to the bee's current whereabouts. Ugh! Indeed it does! The flowery band gleaming of your fing finger gives you away. For it is identical to the one shown by the hand of his bride in the photo print. You know, I made a joke that <laughs> when I when I first came in here and I was looking around and I was like, I was like, man, something really went down in this fucking room. And I was like, I was like, it's either, it's either like something burnt or maybe these two were just fucking. I didn't, I had some like, I don't know, some fucking Nostradamus type shit going on right there. It's no ordinary household. 
You are his wife and you are also his maid. You are his lucky bride. You are Mrs. Gary herself. Oh my word! Well, jolly fine deduction, sir. As you rightly sum summarize, this is my wife, yes, Miss Joan. Rather let herself go, you must say, but she has a- Oh! <laughs> would appear that you don't live in the most comfortable of circumstances. After all, you're being a retired army man, yet you are- Yet you are in the business of renting rooms. Would assume, therefore, you have insufficient means of to employ a maid. Without that, uh, would that be correct? Not right, I tell you. I was second lieutenant of the third regiment. A man has his pride, don't you know? By golly, it's a sorry thing when a chap doesn't, when a chap can't even afford to have a single maid in his employ. Yes, here in London, one is rather judged. A household cannot be considered worthy of society if it employs no staff as, uh, at all. Though it may, though it may consider, fuck, damn it. Though it may consider opinions, such concerns about appearances are folly. You mean, Mr. Gary has his wife work as a maid? Precisely. Am I right, Mr. Gary? Only in company, obviously. But listen here. This must remain silent. Tip top secret, please. Yeah, so... Whenever company's over, he's like, wife, put on the maid outfit. We gotta, I gotta pretend to be wealthy. So people take us seriously. Alright, now Mr. Gary. It's plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for the formidable beast. Yes. Indeed, by your pose. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel, it's relieved by the supporting arm. Shut up, Mikotova. You too, Ryanosuke. Let me just do it, man. Uh. In other words, he hasn't lost his beloved at all, has he? Oh, how true. So perhaps the supporting arm that seems to be propping his head has some other significance then. According to Mr. Sloan's, his pain is tangible though. Yes, I know. He's not supporting his head. He's fucking rubbing that goddamn slap cheek. Should beat his ass with. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel being revealed by the slap cheek. And oh my god, she got in his eye too? Jesus, that must have fucking hurt. The big ass palm. <laughs> And of course, the delivery of impressive mark on your cheek refused to fade. Was you, Madame Joan? Yes, well. Yeah, I've been desperate to hide the slap mark on your, on your face. <laughs> That's why you're fucking talking to me from this angle. How oh, the blazes. How did you work that out, man? Nothing escapes or notice train uh damn it, I can't even fucking read no more. Nothing escapes the notice of one trained in the art of observation. Ob observation? Observation! That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once. To keep your other side from view. Well, uh Now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Why were you subjected to such a violent slap? In other words, you must ask yourself what caused Madame Gary to fly into a rage. Ah, your gaze gives it away, madam. Let's see what the fuck you're looking at. It's the bills! Yes, 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 I get it, yes, yes. The bills are all for lion fodder, yes. Now establish the lion never existed, which can only mean that the thing responsible for gobbling up all the food was his wife. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> What's his wife? She's a person, not a thing. 
Ah, yes, well, uh, she's also a person who gave her husband a mighty slap. Uh, one so hard that it left a perfect hand mark, in fact. Yes, why would a woman want to hit her husband with such force? Why would a woman want to hit her husband with such force? If I can tell you the stories over the most pettiest of fights that I have ever seen over the most pettiest of things. I'd love to know the answer to that question. All right. Well, she's not looking at the bills. Maybe she's looking at the book. Oh! Reading the book at the moment. There's a bookmark here, look. Uh, clearly an avid reader. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think this is a bookmark. Oh, isn't it? It's a note written in a woman's hand. Oh, James, I love you. You're Mary. Oh, look next to the signature here. Lip marks made with lipstick. Oh, what passionate and romantic gestures. Don't get any ideas, Sasato-san. <laughs> we mean don't get any ideas, Sasato-san. Don't get any ideas for your sake. She's 16, man. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. So this bookmark is actually a love note, then. Well, no wonder why she slapped the shit out of you. Take that! Yes, it is the love note that has given rise to the pain of your suffering. Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. Passionate indeed. Damn, she looks furious. <laughs> Perhaps the sender of this note, a certain Miss Mary, is, is the fly in the... Ornament in the ornament here. Jesus, fuck, man. But I don't know the bloody woman. You don't know her. And the note was wasn't written to me. It was just a book. I don't know how it got there. It was just in there, you say? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's right. That's what I've been saying. Mm! A likely story. Now listen here, Jean, old thing. I explained it at <laughs> I explained it at the time. I bought the book at the second-hand place, and that note must have already been in there. So the previous owner of the book was using the note as a bookmark. You mean? That's right. That's what I've been saying. A likely story. For heaven's sake, woman! Look at the name. It was written to James. My name, in case I've forgotten, is John. Mm -hmm. A likely story. Are you questioning my name now? Oh my god. Th that's not good. <laughs> and there we have it. Arouse the suspicion of the, fe of the female heart, and you unleash a beast. Ugh. Now then, in a final fit of rage, the Furious Beast carried out the last, uh, one last imaginable attack. Imaginable? I'm unimaginable, my bad. The other man's witch clearly seen by observing the carpet over there. Very expensive fooling carpet. Oh dearie me. Could have caused such destructive outbursts. Uh. This time, madam, I'm afraid your gaze gives you away yet again. He thinks the cake. I think it's the candelabra. <laughs> but surely Miss Gary didn't eat the carpet. No, of course not. But there doesn't seem to be any doubt that the state of the disarray in this room is the result of her wild temper. No, that's true. So, this is the last part, Mr. Slow's seduction, we need to fix. We need only follow her gaze. We'll find the answer. Sorry, I had to yawn for a bit. Alright, cool. Candlestick. Let me examine it first. Looks like a very old candlestick, doesn't it? The base looks small, surely. It's very unsustainable. Unstable. It looks to be, uh, to even the slightest knock would make it topple over. Oh dear, that'd be dangerous. Wait, take a closer look at this. There's one candle missing. Yes, I did notice it before. Why is that, I wonder? 
All right. Take that. Yes. To explain the desire state, desire. Wow. To explain the dire state of the carpet, we only need to look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow. And of course, the only possible way out of this logical labyrinth. Yes, the remnants of the ferocious attack in which the carpet was devoured are clearly visible. Indeed they are. The scorch marks at the edge clearly give the truth away. Scorch marks? It would appear that this room was the scene of a little martial uh, altercation. Martial material. Why did I say martial? Miss Gary might have my uh, Miss Gary, uh, her mighty arms left an impression not only on her husband's face, but on the entire room. The force of her strike caused candles to fall apart. <laughs> Jesus. And in seconds, the carpet was alight. The whole corner of the room in flames. Yes, er, ahem. For the most ferocious beast in the world to neither, uh, to, uh, god damn it. Neither violent lion nor vengeful woman, but fire. In this room, the ferocious beast bared his claws and ran amok. Eloquently put, my dear fellow. So you see, there is but one conclusion here. After the sparks of material discord flew, this room was the scene of a fire. He can stand! Mr. Sloans? I salute you! Oh my god, don't. Somebody, somebody catch him. Jesus. Oh, thank you. We killed the moon, man. Ah. It's these dash long winter nights, you know? Nothing to do but read in front of the fire. Luckily, there's a jolly good second hand bookshop just around the corner, but all my all my old novels there. Uh, but all my old novels there. What the fuck did I just read? I'm sorry. By all my old novels. Yeah, okay, cool. And in the pages of one particular novel, you discovered some rather illicit material. For which your wife... <laughs> and, um, admonished... Admonished? Oh, God. She fucked you up for it. That's what I'm saying. Don't know about... Um, uh, admon... Uh, admon... Is that a fucking word? Demolished might be rather closer. And Beast is more certainly an apt. <laughs> Here we go again. And the carpet? Was that destroyed by fire when the candle fell on the floor? Afraid to say it was. Happened in the blink of an eye, you know? The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a bloody thing. I was caught between the old stick raging. Ah, oh, fuck. The old stick, rage, and raging flames. The old stick's rage and the raging flames. You paint a torrid picture, sir. One that would have been most entertaining. <laughs> That's sympathy for you. Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bloody furniture started going up as well. We've had to hide the mess behind the screen for the time being. Over there? Well, you have nothing more to hide now, if you'll allow me. Oh, it's pretty fucked. What's that? Is that, is that a book? That big one? That very thick one? And all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got them all, that was it. Whoosh, up and smoke. Gosh. And the wife started hurling things at me. What a terrible sight it must have been. 
Uh, there was a back. There was backup against uh, what? There was backup against the window, under heavy enemy fire. Incinerated books and come in tens to the dozen. Wait, the books caught on, caught on fire and she started throwing them at you? Oh man, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride. Ah yes, your notorious love of big cats coming through again. I assure, I assure you, the title didn't influence my choice in the slightest. So the poor man really, really did lose something dear to him as a result of the ferocious beast rampage. Mr. Slump's deductions turned out to be correct once again. Oh, go fuck yourself. It can only be described as a great British wonder. To tell you, it was total carnage. Flames everywhere and the old stick in, f in full fiddle. <sighs> Out of interest, what time of day was it? Not sure if I can remember. It was two days ago now. Let's see, around five o'clock. So, at exactly the same... Huh. Exactly the same... Was your window open by chance? Was your window open? Did she, did she throw a knife at you? As a terrifying incident was unfolded outside the window. Hmm. Even more terrifying on the inside, I assure you. The whole of, uh, the whole of Blightly, Blightly, could have been, could have been flattered outside my window at the moment. Flattened, not flattered, flattened, sorry. And I would have had noticed a dashing thing. Oh, really? Hmm. Hmm, Mr. Sloans? Yes, Mr. Nadahodo, what can I do for you? Well, I think we've got to the bottom of the situation now. But what does it have to do with Natsume circumstances? I can't help you there, I'm afraid. Just tell me, was the window open or not? If the window was open, chances are she threw a fucking knife. Chances are it went and right in the lady's back. <laughs> My dear fellow, if you recall, I did say much from the outset. I warned you that although I knew the retired army man was hiding something, it could not I could not be sure whether it was secret. Whether his secret proved to be relevant or not. I just knew you were gonna say that. Now then, you mustn't lose heart. Bear in mind that all things fall into one of only two categories. Those relevant to the case and those that are not. This makes no sense to me. Well, no matter. It is as far greater importance that you make up your mind now. Sorry? Visiting hours are at the prison uh, Visiting hours at the prison will be over soon. Oh. Is it that time already? Alright, if we were to accept this case, we have official we have official paperwork to attend to. So that's it. No more time to think. Perhaps you'd like to betake yourselves to bidding us farewell now. I must prepare suffer. Suffer? Suffer. Yeah, he's, she's gonna prepare some suffrage, alright. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. Thank you both very much for your time. Soseki-san will be waiting for us. And I'm gonna have to give him an answer. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Can I just... Sorry, can I just look... Again, if that window was open, a knife could have gone flying. Just gonna could could have just gone flying through the fucking through the window, not through the window, but through an open window. What the fuck? Why am I here? I went to the prison. It's time. We must hurry back to the prison. Yeah, I know. Let's hail a carrot. Oh, what's the matter? Looks like something's going on over there in front of the. In front of the Gary's house. Huh? Who? Uh? 
I know thee not, old man. Fall to the prayers. What are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck? What are you talking about? You rum looking nip. Ninny pimp. Ninny pimp. What the fuck? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. Than are, than are dreamt in your philosophy. Who's this Horatio fella? What are you on about? Excuse me. What the? Who are you now? I'm sorry. Just look as though there might be some problem here. My associate here, Mr. Rianosuke, is a lawyer, you see. A lawyer? What? If I can be assistance, I'd like to help. I'm from Japan, but I have studied English law. Fine, I'll be on my I'll be on my way for today. But you mock my words. This ain't over yet. Why is he doing poses? Get thee to a get thee to a nunnery. Do I look like a blooming nun to you? What the fuck just happened? I do hope you're not injured. Oh, fair, a fair eastern maiden, thou art so gentle. Thou, thou art so gentle. Thou art so gentle. Thank you. What was that all about? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. Okay, you just said that before. What the fuck? I'm not Horatio either. Forgive the inquiry, sir, but are you a lodger here? In the Garaday household. Oh, fair eastern maiden. Thou art so right. Yes, I do dwell in this humble abode. Hmm. He mentioned that he had another lodger, didn't he? This must be the man. Do you happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Ah, yes, a gentleman named Natsume. Oh, more worthy of a po a palmist? What the fuck? In my battle of words, nearer, nayer, could there be? What the fuck? I'm having a stroke here. Sorry. Battle, did you say? Who is the stronger, Helmet or Macbeth? Mr. Natsume and I spared long. Oh god, you two talk about literature? Is that what's going on? I see. I don't fully understand, but it seems Mr. Natsume and this gentleman are acquaintances, at least. I find it interesting for a man who uh, dresses so lavishly, you live in a shithole. But okay. So, fair maiden. So, good gentleman. I can tarry here no longer. Fare thee well. Goodbye to yourself. I didn't really understand him, but I think he's returning to his room. Seems he's unaware of what happened to Mr. Natsume, so he can't really help us. With soseki san and the man as lodgers, the Gary household is certainly full of of incent, incent, eccentrics. I can't even say the word. Anyways, I'll go and find a carriage. Yes, I'm sure Mr. Natsume is eagerly awaiting our return. Let's hope we can get to the prison before visiting hours are over. I need a drink of water. I'm dying here. <coughs> Clear my throat a bit. You okay there, Soseki? Oh, it's you! You're here! You came! Locum student, Mr. Nutterhood Esquire. I can't believe you came back. I'm so touched! We're so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natsume. Oh no, think nothing of it. R relax. If I were a cat, I would purr with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots. Noble, nourishing, never failing Nipponese. Okay. Oh now, nah, let's not get carried away. On I oh, I quite agree. There's nothing more reassuring than the familiarities of one native land. On the other hand, <laughs> fucking Shlomes, where do you get off, man? It is through friendship transcending international borders that one truly appreciates the fact. 
Such is my belief, at least. Uh, oh, it's, yes, uh, it, it's you! The miserable, rotten spy! Herlock Shlomes! Mr. Shlomes, what are you doing here? I had no intention of doing anything, per se. Say, observating, of course. Observating? Why did I say it like that? Observating, of course. Uh, whatever do you mean, Mr. Slums? Well, having encountered some curious read- Curious? Curious reading material in the gloomy room. And having unmasked the secret identity of the eccentric pair. I decided I should drop in on my way home to see how our- How our divest- Dev ah, damn it. Devastated friend is faring. I'm losing my mind? How long has this stream been going for? Almost four hours? Shit. Gloomy room. At least your accommodations here offer a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is a superior option. Anyways, I must commend you on your taste in books. My day has been a delight and cost me not a penny. You? How dare you, Herlock Shlomes? Uh. I've had it. I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted by spirits and those accursed lodgings, no doubt my luck will be accursed in tomorrow's trial as well. Haunted by spirits? What the fuck? What? My whole life has been be damned. My whole life has been damned. Be damned? Be damned. What? Is be damned. Hmm, that's weird. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? He mentioned that once before, didn't he? That his lodgings... Oh, I can't read. That his lodgings were cursed, I mean? And there is much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? Cursed is a wholly appropriate description, I would say. For the man's lodgings, and indeed for tomorrow's trial... What's that supposed to mean? What the fuck is this curse you're talking about? First time I'm hearing about this shit. Cursed trial. No, 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 no. Tell me about the lodgings. When you say accursed lodgings before, you're referring to your room at the Gary's household, I assume. Do you mean to say that you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain. But I'd only been in London a week before I started to notice strange feelings. That didn't take long then. Hmm. Everywhere I looked, there was foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. I was so... I was so sure people were talking about me. I started to become nervous about going outside. They were always staring at me. All the time, from dawn till dusk. So I shut myself away in my room. But even that didn't help. The fear wouldn't go away. You must have been very lonely having been away from your homeland for such a long time. I have to move a number of times, most recently to the room on Briar Road, a week ago now. Yes. Why did you choose there? It seems a little inconvenient. The rent is cheap. I have so little money, it appealed to me straight away. Of course, I asked why it was so affordable. The landlord just simply said, The room is cursed. Oops. He quickly, he quickly tried to cover his mistakes, but it was too late, so I told him. If you have something to say, then say it. But if not, don't mention it in the first place. Ah, uh, yes. Well said. But it was true. It was all true. You mean, the room really is cursed then? Ever since I moved into the windowless hellhole, my sleep has been plagued with nightmares. I feel awake as though I'm... Wait, what? I, I feel awake. <laughs> I awake feeling as though I've been choked to death. It's the cat, isn't it? The cat's not his. He goes to sleep and the cat sleeps on his face. <laughs> and in my waking hours, people are stabbed in front of me as I walk down the street. I'm branded a killer. Thrown in prison, nobody wants to know me. I'm... Surrounded by scary, sinister spirits. Oh, shit. If only there was someone, just one person on my side. 
Can no one can no one find it in his or her heart to believe in me? Really, no one at all. To believe, yes, to believe. Mr. Natsume, what did you mean by what you said just now? About the trial tomorrow being cursed. Oh no, why are you looking so grave? You're making me nervous. I was just getting carried away, that's all. I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. I really agitated him. You don't mean... The trial is really cursed somehow. Well, I mean, if Von Zykes is going to be there, then I guess you can say that. Shut up, Sloams. Don't say it. Don't tell him he doesn't need to know. Are you referring to the prosecutor? The re Oh, what? Sloam's not the one that said it? I am? Jesus. Damn it, Ryanosuke. The Reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please, tell me. Summarize it in, in succeeding... Succeed... What? Hmm. Succeedingly in 16... Su uh, salient? Salient? Yeah. Yeah, salient. Salient words. No defendant has ever survived the trial in which the Reaper stands for the, pros for the prosecution. Ever. Oh my goodness. Can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly. Yesterday, Mr. Nanahodo successfully defeated someone against the Reaper. I uh, defeated, my bad. <laughs> defeated someone against the Reaper. Defended someone against the Reaper. But then after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in unusual circumstances. Mr. McGilded. You should have took his money. You should have took his money before he died. Now you can't. Now you can't walk back and be like, actually, I need that money. Should have just took it. That man offered you a fucking fortune. You should have just took it. I'm impressed, Mrs. Otto. You have an eye for detail. Actually, Lord Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sloams. Surely. It can't be that having failed to have the accused convicted, Lord Von Zykes killed the man himself. Oh no, he couldn't have, surely. Listen, I understand he's, he's, he's Von Zykes, right? Probably part of the Von Karma family line. But I don't think that man would go that far. M Manfred was a case. That guy was a, that guy was something. And even then, he did feel remorse for what he did, right? I'm not saying it was right, because it obviously wasn't, but he did feel remorse for what he did. That's why he took an Edgeworth, right? But <laughs> I don't think Von Zykes is an evil guy. I just think he's very stoic. No, not stoic. Stoic's not the word. Uh, Stern? You have some wonderful notions. Sorry? The man isn't a mass murderer. He's a court prosecutioner, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. Of course he is. Of course he is? Then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however, that the real truth about the man is even more terrifying than your hypothesis. What on earth do you mean by that? Yeah, tell me about the Reaper. Von Zykes is... Uh, Van Zykes, my bad. It's not Von Zykes, it's Van Zykes. Van Zykes is quite exceptional man. However, in London's court of law, exceptional does not equate to winning every case with that exception. Huh? Th that's good. Zeki son looks like he's gonna cry tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in British criminal trial, there are both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates based on the letter of the law, whilst the jury offers public opinion and common sense. It is an excellent system, whereby the defendant's guilt is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Right. I mean... <laughs> I mean, look at all the celebrities now. Look at all the streamers and YouTubers that easily get away with shit. <laughs> Criminals and corrupted lawyers, for that matter, can use it to their advantage. By any means at their disposal, 
con uh, con contriving, yeah, contriving, contriving evidence called impo calling imposters a wit. Oh, damn it, calling imposters as witnesses and so on. By such underhand means, those who would want to are able to swear, sweary. God damn it, are able to sway the jury. Which means the jury? Did I just say jury? A uh, jury. Which means the the event. Uh, damn it, I can't fucking read no more. I'm losing my mind. Which means the evening in the, shit. Which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can fail. But it means the wrong verdict can be passed. And sadly, it's from time to time, my dear madam. It is simply the reality of the situation. Is that right? However, those in those indicted by Lord Von Zykes. I keep saying Von Zykes. Lord Van Zykes cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. Oh my. Though the adjudication may seem them leave the courtroom with their freedom, within months they all disappear. It's most striking. Really? I thought that was just like a wild case, right? I thought it was fucking, he's never been beaten in court, and then we beat him, but somehow we still lost the battle because the dude died. Now that's been flipped on its head, and it's like, oh no, no, him losing in court doesn't mean shit to anyone. It's the fact that he showed up, and every time he showed up, whether win or lose, that person's fucking dead. D disappear? But how? Oh, by all manners of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the th the Thames? Themes? Thames? Thames. Thames and drown. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by a raging fever. Or perhaps attacked by a highwayman. Oh, no, 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 no. All examples of the reality of... Reality? Damn it. All examples of the reality of events here in London, I'm afraid, Mr. Narahodo. He's like, if you really want to win, you got to get the guy's freedom and you got to make sure he lives through it. Ah, oh, I knew it. I'm a dead do- wait, what? <laughs> dead dodo done for, doomed. Ah, shit. Mr. Slums. Me? Mr. Narahodo. Pray, what can I do for you? It is about the <clears throat> it's about the case on the SS Bureau, if you recall. The Bureau. The Bureau. Ah yes, that case. The one with the snake. It was a cat asshole. Well yeah. I mean there was a snake. At the time I was a suspect, but you believed in me and listened to my side of the story. And you helped us to investigate. I did, did I? Interesting. What I want to know is why. Why did you believe in me? I see, yes, you mean... Because you were a grimly dressed, shady eastern fellow? Found with, found with the victim in a locked room? <laughs> well, if you like... Yes? I'm a little surprised that the answer requires explanation, my dear fellow. It's quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. But I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have suspected me a little. I think perhaps you have misunderstood. I neither recall believing you, nor in that which you were telling me. Wait, what? Nor in that which you were telling me. I did read that, right? I just, it just don't sound right to me. <laughs> what? You see... The only thing I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What? What do you mean, Mr. Slums? I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. If I should like to believe in something, I do. The circumstances can hang as far as I'm concerned. But I could have betrayed your trust. <laughs> In that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment. Nothing more. 
Betrayal of trust is an overused excuse in my opinion. Meaning, whether or not one should trust another is, in the final analysis, down to oneself. It's a matter of whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right. He's right. Welcome student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire. Whether or not I can believe myself. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. You are so right, Kazuma. Well, my dear fellows, someone just definitely fucking banged my wall so hard that my TV shook, 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 whatever. The shit I deal with every day, Jesus fuck. Well, my dear fellows, it's time that we, uh, that we were leaving, I believe. Already? Visiting hours are over. The guards will be here shortly to escort us out. There's a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout. Would you get to join me? Oh dear, there's never enough time, is there? Um, Mr. Natsume, if you like, in the trial tomorrow, I'd be happy to represent you. Welcome student Mr. Narahodo Esquire! As I said, I only experienced a British courtroom for the first time yesterday. And although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. Something crucial? What to believe in, the defendant, justice or the truth? How to believe even? But I think I finally worked it out. I decided I must believe in myself above all else to trust my instincts. Yes, Mr. Narahodo. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Natsume, are innocent of this crime. And it's imperative that we prove that in court. Welcome student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire. I will fight for your innocence until the bitter end with every weapon available to me. So I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. As I said when we first met, I like to entrust my fate to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It would be fair to say, Mr. Natahoda, that your mind was in many ways made up from the outset. You merely needed the events of today to fully realize it. Yes, I think you're right about that. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. Miss Sasada? Yes? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in court? Absolutely. As I said this morning, you may consider me your personal judicial assistant. The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavy on my mind. But it's time to stop looking backwards. Cosmo believed in me, and Mr. Sloan's believed in me now too. So, it's time. Time that I learned to believe in myself. Seki san has no one. He's all alone. It's my job to help him, to fight in his corner. Tomorrow, in the courtroom, with all the strength I can muster. To be continued. Ah, shit! My throat is killing me. Reading nonstop. 
for four for four hours and 15 minutes jesus all right <clears throat> jesus fuck i think this is a good stopping point all right gonna save my game this is a good spot to save, right? Yeah, because it's over episode one. All right, gonna save my game, and that's gonna be it for this stream for tonight, right? When I stream next time, same as always, the schedule. Unless, uh, you know, unless I put out a little notice on Twitter or something, and I'm like, hey man, I'm I'm streaming right now. Come come and watch it, All right? But you know, if that doesn't happen, the schedule's still the same. Next time's gonna be, you know, Persona 4 Golden, more of that. And then after that, come back with the uh, with the uh, Ace Attorney shit. Alright. <laughs> Can you tell? I started this I started this stream tired and now I'm both tired and my voice hurts. Um I'm not besides these streams and maybe like, you know, the YouTube stuff, I'm not really a talkative guy. <laughs> I don't I don't talk that much. I stay quiet. I stay to myself. Um but yeah, fucking, that's the plan for Twitch right now. As for YouTube, the same things are getting uploaded, you know. Uh, I I was supposed to upload today, I didn't, sadly. But you know, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, that playthrough, Oogie's Revenge, fucking that's getting uploaded. And um, the streams for Quartz Party Blood, Blood Drive, and fucking, what's the other thing? <laughs> Uh, Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines. Yep, that thing. <laughs> That's getting uploaded. I'm gonna upload that. I'm gonna upload. Actually, I'm gonna upload that like right away after this stream is over because I've been procrastinating. Same thing with the some some emails I have to answer and stuff like that for uh for the artwork for um the Pokemon Marathon when that gets uploaded on YouTube channel. I'm trying to I'm trying to start that by the end of this month, right? Uh, cause I know the artist that's gonna do the thumbnail artwork fucking they are very excited to do it <laughs> to the point where they're like they're like come on give me tell me what i gotta do tell me what to do right now and i completely it completely skipped my mind and i checked my email today and i'm like oh fuck i forgot <laughs> so i gotta email them later get that done and hopefully by you know the end of uh hopefully before the end of this month maybe around like the 20th 25th i'll start uploading that hopefully Right, so that's the plan for YouTube. Uh, I might, I might put up a uh, extra video on YouTube, like uh, a night, a spotlight or quick look or something for um for uh, Shifu, because that came out. Same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Forbidden West, because I completely forgot about that game, and it's coming out next week. Right? Fucking what's today's date? It is the tenth, so we're eight days away for that game to come out. And fucking, I know Dying Light 2 just came out, but I really don't care about Dying Light 2. And it seems like a lot of other people don't care about Dying Light 2, despite that game being in development hell for a bit. Um, yeah, so there's that. I don't think there's anything else coming out this month that I need to be wary of. Like, the whole, I know everyone's playing uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus, however the fuck you want to pronounce it. I pronounce it Arceus. Um... I know people are playing uh, playing that, but, you know, since I'm doing the Pokemon Marathon, I'm probably not going to touch that game until I get to the end of that marathon, which is going to be a while, um, a long while. So I'll be looking forward to that when that happens. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for this month. I'm pretty sure nothing else crazy is coming out. I know next month is Ghostwire Tokyo, right? I didn't expect that to be fucking released uh, in March. I assumed that that would happen, like, maybe... April or like August or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's coming out fairly quick. And then also in March is the Persona Ultimax re-release. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Thank fuck. I love Ultimax. Thank God. I love that game. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, we also had a, oh, Kirby's also coming out in March. Oh shit. I'm so excited for that. I love Kirby. I just finished playing Star Allies. It was great. I loved it. It made me cry a little. <laughs> Very little. Like one tear at the end. Because I was like, my friends! I'm here with all my friends. Right? Um, so there's that. Right? Uh, that's the plan for right now. Uh, nothing's really... I mean, 
Sounds set in stone, but nothing's really set in stone. I'm a fucking mess, as we all saw by today's stream. I don't know what the fuck happened. I lost all my ability to read. That's crazy. I went through like two cups of water, by the way. Um. Fuck. Yeah, so that's the plan. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's right there. Uh, right there. You know, that's my Twitter. I I tweet random things. Fucking, I'm talking too long. The goddamn game's going in sleep mode. I tweet random things from time to time, you know. And you might get a laugh out of it. I'm not sure. Uh, you can check out my hot takes. There's really not that many hot takes I make, but, you know, I, I just bullshit around on Twitter. That's what I do. Uh, so there's that, if you care about it. But, you know, that's it. So, for those who watched on Twitch, watch live, thank you. I appreciate it. It's fun having you guys here for me, even though I can't read for shit. Uh, for those who are watching this tw on Twitch later, you know, fucking if you can catch it live, go ahead and catch it live. You know, uh, it will be archived on the YouTube channel as always down the road once the playthrough is done. Which, which I'm actually surprised how fast I'm kind of getting through. Uh, I'm getting through this one. It's faster than the last time we played the Phoenix Wright games. It's really fast, actually. Maybe because I'm giving it, like, more time. But, um... So that's cool, right? On the whole Twitch thing. That's great. You know, if you if you want to follow, follow. That's cool, I guess, right? Sub if you want to sub. But, but since I don't really stream that much as I would like, I really wouldn't say sub at this point, you know? But if, if you want to, it's there. I'm not going to stop you, right? I'll... You know, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, and if for the people watching this on YouTube, if you're not subscribed, please consider it. If you are subscribed, click that bell. You get notifications when uploads go up, right? And if you liked what you watch, even though I'm a royal fuck up, um, you know, click the like button. It really helps out the channel. I got to start whoring out for likes now because YouTube is not going to show my videos to anyone if... If no one likes it. <laughs> if everyone hates it. You know? No, they would show it. YouTube would show it if everyone hated your video. They would show it. Because they're fucking... They're just whores. That's what they are. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, there's that. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else I really got to say. Right? Uh, so... Once again... Just want to say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you... In the next video. Stay happy... Stay healthy and take care. I'm a chef, chef too.